Live from the Orange Bowl in Miami, it's the Maryland Terrapins against the Hurricanes of Miami. Teams who will play today's game in front of scouts from several bowls. They'll be out to win and impress those special guests. And what should impress them are the weapons these clubs have to score on anyone. The Hurricanes have the incomparable Bernie Kozar. In less than two years, he has rewritten his school's record book. And the marks he doesn't already own are easily within his reach. The sophomore has a great arm, but what sets him apart from the rest is his ability to see the field, to change plays at the line of scrimmage, and his courage. And Kozar has the receivers to go get it. Four men with 34 catches or more. One of them, fullback Alonzo Highsmith, is a fine receiver, but even a better runner. At 229 pounds, he can run over and around tacklers and is on the verge of cracking the 1,000-yard mark. Maryland's weapons are less publicized, but just as potent. Since taking over for the injured Frank Reich, Stan Gelbaugh has racked up some numbers worthy of Kozar. In a half season as a starter, more than 1,000 yards, a completion rate of better than 60% with five touchdowns. And Maryland has the diversity of a running game, too. In close, the man they call on is Rick Badonik, who has 11 touchdowns rushing this year, 30 for his career, and that's just too shy of the school record. While his rushing statistics aren't that impressive, Badonik gets the ball when the Terps have to have the yardage. We may need a calculator to keep up with the score this afternoon as Maryland meets Miami in the Orange Bowl. Is your computer... South Florida, warm, humid, a threat of showers, and the Orange Bowl is a perfect setting for a big, big college football game. Hi, everybody. Mike Patrick along with former pro linebacker Kevin Kiley, and it's a pleasure to have you with us along our ACC football network again this afternoon. When people talk about this football game, they talk about the great offensive weapons that both of these teams have. And, Kevin, it's not that they don't have defenses. It's just that the offenses are so good they score on everybody. Well, today, Mike, the defenses are going to be on their heels. They'll be stretched. Two great offensive teams. Maryland may have a little bit of an advantage. Well, a great advantage now because we just learned that Alonzo Highsmith, the great running back of Miami, was injured in the pregame and probably will not play. But the Maryland advantage is that they can prepare for the passing game. Most of Miami's offense is through the air, almost 3,000 yards. Maryland has a more balanced attack, and that means Miami's defense will have to think both run and pass. When Maryland's defense comes on the field, how are they going to be able to stop Bernie Kosar and the great receivers he has? Well, with all the rhetoric, there's only two things you can do. You can either rush the passer or you can cover the receivers. Maryland will have to get out of their wide tackle six front. They'll go with a nickel and a dime defense, probably. A lot of defensive backs. They may replace some of the down linemen and the outside linebackers. Does Maryland run the risk of getting caught up in seeing Miami throwing the football so much? Uh, they have a great passing game. Do they turn around and do the same thing? Well, there's always that risk. If you get down 21 points, and that could happen in this game, you have to go to the passing game. But Maryland has the advantage. I think they have a good balanced attack. They can run for big yardage as well as pass. So while they're in the game point-wise, I think they'll probably stay with that balanced attack, Mike. It is such a big, big game for both teams. Both of them want to go to bowls. I guess major bowls are still within their reach. That's what you play for. You play for a bowl game. Hey, we're in Miami. This is a bowl game, right? Bowl game for us, anyway. Uh, you play for a bowl game. Miami still has thoughts of a national championship. Maryland had three tough losses early, but probably now they're among the best team in the best teams in the country. Could be 44-43, and we'll be back with a kickoff of today's game right after this. And huddled around head coach Bobby Ross. The Terps are 5-3 and three on the season. 4-0 in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Of course, the conference doesn't mean anything this afternoon. An intersectional game against a great University of Miami football team that is 8-2 after a tough start. And Kevin, probably the toughest schedule in the country. They played everybody and most of them on the road. That's right. They started out on the road. Of course, they played Auburn in the opener. That was in the Meadowlands. And they have had a tough schedule. They've held up very well. You made reference to the conference and how the conference really doesn't mean anything in this game, and that's true. But I think the conference is watching. This is the defending national champion, University of Miami. Maryland, this year so far, along with Virginia, has been the class of the ACC, and they want Maryland to win this one badly. This is the kicker, Mark Seelig, who will kick it away from Miami. Interestingly enough, the Hurricanes won the toss and gave up the option. They will take the option in the second half. And it might be that kind of game. And I still think the last team with the ball more than two minutes to go wins. That'd be great to have a game like that. These are the best type of games. And notice he's kicking off from the left hash mark. Uh, a little bit unusual. A kicker. Sometimes kickers pull or push the ball, and they'll move left or right to compensate for their leg. Here's a good look at Seelig. 
He will kick it away, and the deep man for the University of Maryland is Keita Covington, who's averaging more than 21 yards a return. He's standing at his five-yard line. Set to go from the Orange Bowl, Miami and Maryland. Covington driven deep in the end zone, lets it go. It's beyond the end line, so Maryland will get to start from its own 30-yard line. Kevin, how many times does that play come into uh, practice this year? Well, every yard counts, Mike, and uh, even an opening penalty counts. Uh, I, I mentioned the hash mark. If he had kicked the hash mark, that ball would have been. That's right. He would have had more distance to travel on the angle. So Maryland out at the 30, and we just had an official flattened by linebacker Bruce Fleming. He'll hit anybody. Yeah, they're ready that today when they go after the Zebras on the first play before they even make a bad call. Maryland comes out with Stan Gelbaugh at quarterback. But Donick and Alvin Blount are the running backs split behind him. Miami jumps, but no flag. Long signal count by Gelba. This is Blount trying to get outside, and he's tripped up as Greg Jones, the rover back, came up to make the tackle. And one of Maryland's outside receivers missed a block trying to keep Jones inside. Offense for Maryland. Gelba, of course, has taken over for Frank Reich. Neal is excellent, over 400 yards running. But Donick is the touchdown guy. Hill, the leading receiver. Edmonds, watch him, the tight end. He's a freshman, and he's tough. Offensive line, they'll get a test. That three-down lineman of Miami, probably the best they've faced all year. Blount came out to start number 33 instead of Neal 48, but they're virtually interchangeable, almost identical statistics. Second down, call a 10. They'll give it to Badonic. Gets off one tackler and then is stopped. And a flag goes down. Julio Cortez made the tackle for Miami. We'll check the penalty for you. Preliminary signal is illegal procedure against Maryland. Maryland's got to be a little tight in this game. This is the defending national champions, and uh, everyone remembers that historic game against Nebraska. They declined the penalty, so it'll be third down and six. And, uh, Fagan is the guy to watch when you just saw the defensive line. He's an outstanding player. Fleming is the leading tackler on the team. And this is probably the best secondary that Maryland has faced all year. These guys are great athletes. They're a little bit bigger than the average guy. And they're hitters. They'll come after you. And you'll see them coming up real strong all day. And watch out for the free safety, number 19, Daryl Fullington. He is a gamer. Third down, six yards to go. Maryland at its own, 34. Opening minutes, first quarter. And Gelba to throw, draw, Badonic. Forget it. But Donick's buried. Winston Moss, number 92, the right end, was out there waiting for him and made the stop. So the Hurricanes have an outstanding first defensive series. And these guys have had some excellent defensive games, Kevin. Yeah, this is, you know, you, you kind of lose sight of the fact because Kozar passes so well. That was a third and six, and Maryland ran the ball. That's an interesting call, and we'll see if that's their game plan today, if they can run against uh, Miami. Daryl Wright back to punt and waiting for it. Eddie Brown standing at his own 33-yard line. Wright with some pressure. Got it out. Low line drive kick takes a bounce and a good roll for Maryland. And the Terps are down there to cover it inside the 20. All the way down to the 18-yard line. A good break for Maryland at that point. And Miami will have to start from inside its own 20-yard line in its opening offensive series. Be interesting to see if Highsmith comes out at fullback. We'll be back to find out after a 49-yard kick by Wright for Maryland. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl after this. Yeah. For its first possession, and their big sophomore fullback, Alonzo Highsmith, is on the field. We saw him go down during warm-ups. We are told he normally wears a knee brace, did not have one on during warm-ups, and went down and really looked like he had a bad knee injury. And there's a shot of him being taken off before the game even started and limping quite noticeably. And he is the key to their ground game. Kozar has them in the eye and then splits Darrell Oliver, number 37, to a wing. This is a wide-open offense. They'll throw everything at you. Highsmith, first carry, room off the right side, runs over Stanley Shakespeare, his flanker back and then stacked up by the Maryland defense. The play looked like it had a lot of room and ended up being almost nothing. Maryland did something very interesting. They brought their ends out and co co excuse me, covered the wide receivers very tight at the line of scrimmage, and that's tantamount to double coverage. Take a look at the offense here. Kozar, you know him. <laughs> there they go. Highsmith is in That's the game. how fast they run. Offensive line, excellent. Sinclair is a super center. Heffernan's an excellent blocker for this team. They can move people out. 
No gain on the play for Heisman after it looked like he had some running room. The blitz is on. Kozar to throw. Under pressure, sort of side arms it. It's incomplete trying for his tight end, Willie Smith, who has 50 catches coming in this season. The school record is 54. And Kozar is not the most mobile quarterback in the world. Maryland is going to do everything they can to put pressure on. We talked about the two things you need to do pressure. Maryland gets a little bit of pressure on Kozar, and he has to throw on the run. And then he gets... Oh. Uh, a little love tap there by, that was not Dwayne Dunham. 98 was Dwayne Dunham on the outside making uh, Maybe uh, the original pressure. I think it was Chapman, somebody with a six on his back. Good Third job down. by Maryland. Third down and 10. Kosar within 75 yards of breaking about the only record he already doesn't hold for Miami, and that is career yardage. Plenty of time this time, throws complete to his tight end Smith, but he's going to be shy of the first down. 212 pound sophomore makes the catch and he's a yard short of the first down. Willie Smith is not a blocking tight end, he's a receiving tight end. Kozar took his time on that play, but Smith made an excellent catch. The Maryland defense, you're gonna see a lot of changes here. Shankweiler and Kelly will probably be replaced off and on all day because they'll be changed for defensive backs. The interior of that line has gotta get pressure. Two great inside linebackers, Fawcett and Wilson. Kevin, my mistake, it was uh, it was a first down. Smith did get enough. Eric Wilson, the linebacker number 55, sneaking up like he's going to blitz if Kozar throws, but he won't. They'll give it off. And it's Darrell Oliver, the halfback behind Highsmith. He'll get a couple. Every time Miami runs, it's a, it makes you feel like it's a surprise. <laughs> yeah, well, Maryland is, is showing great respect for the passing game. They are covering, double covering the wide receivers, Brown and Shakespeare, probably the the greatest name certainly in English literature and not doing bad in college football either here's the secondary Covington Gunderman and Covington the Covington's obviously brothers you'll see a lot more defensive secondary people than that today second down call it a long five Miami with the ball outside its own 33 yard line Kozar only a sophomore could end up being one of the greatest quarterbacks that ever played this game. Now give it to Oliver again. Oliver stacked up as he got it in the middle of the Maryland line. Eric Wilson. You see Eric Wilson in the middle of the screen. Eric Wilson, that was an All-American tackle. One-on-one, -on -one, head up in the numbers. A perfect job by Wilson. Miami may not have met a team as physical as Maryland. Maryland sometimes isn't as quick as their opponents, but I'll tell you, the Terps are a physical team, and you play them for 60 minutes, they'll beat you up. Third down, three yards to go. Kosar brings them out. Has Shakespeare to the near side, Brown to the far side as his wide receivers, and goes straight back. Time to throw and complete, and that's Highsmith at the 43-yard line. Taken down by Steve Kelly, one of the linebackers in safety. Al Covington came up on the stop. Maryland overloaded on the left side there, and they almost got to him. See, great pressure by Maryland, but a terrific job by the Miami offensive line. And this is what he'll do to you. Highsmith out of the backfield. You give Kozar uh, the time, and he'll be on the mark right between the numbers. Highsmith now with 35 catches this year. He is only the fourth leading receiver on this team. Miami first and 10 in its own 42. It's the Canes' first possession. Highsmith number 30. The remaining setback, Oliver is on a wing, and Highsmith goes straight up the middle. Mester number 83 on the tackle. It's the place you normally attack the wide tackle six, but Kevin, as you were saying earlier, uh, Maryland probably not playing a legitimate wide tackle six today. They're really not attacking defense. What they're doing is getting the defense on their heels. As you see, Highsmith's number is 863 yards, and uh, the passing game will set that up. Uh, it give him a lot of large. That was like a draw play almost. They slipped the ball to Highsmith. And Maryland back on their heels thinking about the uh, pass, the linebackers, and he got some yardage. As good as uh, the other receivers are, Highsmith, the only Hurricane receiver with a catch in every ball game. There's the pass to the tight end. And Willie Smith into Maryland territory at the 40-yard line be another first down. Now, this is uh, right now a possession passing game, but Kozar has got the arm to air it out. The thing that Kozar does so well is he recognizes at the snap what Maryland is doing and Smith recognized too what it was it was a zone he found the seam in the zone Kozar saw it at the same time and he just got rid of the ball after two steps there's no defense for that if both the receiver and the quarterback recognize the play you're in trouble defensively that's coaching Kozar marching his team downfield right now he has them first and 10 at the Maryland 40 yard line both of these teams averaging more than 430 yards a game in offense 
They'll give it off to Melvin Bratton, the freshman running back. He'll get about nine around the right side. Bratton in there for Daryl Oliver, only averaging three and a half yards a carry that time. The 205-pound freshman got outside and picked up nine. As you see that graphic, Kozar of Miami, 62%. Flutie runs around a lot. He throws a lot of balls away, so you see his percentage is a little bit, a little bit down. And, of course, Elway from Stanford and Kelly, the great Kelly who missed his senior year and uh, Miami. And uh, Kozar's making him forget about Jim Kelly, and that's no small feat. Kozar's making everybody forget about all kind of quarterback. A lot of people felt that if he had been a senior last year, he'd have been a shoo-in for the Heisman Trophy. Of course, he was only a freshman. Kozar to throw, sideline, incomplete, out of bounds. Keita Covington made a nice play on that one. Coverage was there on that play. Maryland is not doing a bad job coverage-wise. Now, again, Kozar's looking to the sideline, a little play action, and he'll loft this. He's got the great arm, but he'll loft it up. See, he's trying to get it in that dead spot on the sideline, and because he lofted it, gave Covington enough time to get up underneath the receiver and drive him out of bounds. That was Charles Henry going out of bounds with the ball. Third and short, Miami will try to get the first down. They need to cross the 30-yard line. Scott Shankweiler from Maryland signaling they did not get it as Bruce Messner made the tackle. Those are six foot five, and uh, he, he could fall forward for three yards and get a first down. He's a big guy. And it will be fourth down. And no sign of the kicking team. Miami will go for it. They'll put in uh, two tight ends as uh, Charles Henry checks back into the ballgame along with Willie Smith. May even have three in there if Alfredo Roberts checked into the ball game, and it's going to be fourth and inches. They have Bratton and Oliver as the running backs behind Kozar. Remember Kozar's height. Here. They'll give it off, and the first down from Melvin Bratton, who just dives to the Maryland 27 yard line. They talk about Bratton, they talk about breakaway speed and body control. And that particular play, he set his body out of control, and that's why they got the first down. Here it is. When you got a guy who can jump like this, Bratton, and of course there was a hole there too, maybe he didn't have to jump, uh, you send him on a first down uh, try. Good job. I think also Kozar, uh, with his height, as I said, is, is a good weapon when it's short yard. Miami in its first possession has moved from its own 18-yard line to the Maryland 27. They have another first and 10. Kozar with a single back behind him. Maryland coming on the blitz. Kozar with time to throw and completes it to Willie Smith. Smith is knocked down by Covington. Al came up from the safety spot. And when you blitz, you leave your people in man-to-man -man coverage. And Kozar is just great at picking out guys who are open. Well, that was an inside-outside route. The wide receiver did a post. And uh, then the, uh, the intended receiver did a little out. But Al Covington, old Bam Bam, did a nice job coming up. It's only a two-yard gain. Anytime you complete a pass and they stop you for a two-yard gain, you've got good cover. Covington, the free safety, ended up on the tight end that time. Kozar to throw again on second and about eight over the middle, low, incomplete. Tried to hit Willie Smith as tight end, but he threw it into the ground, and probably just as well. Maryland had that covered well. Took a short drop, didn't set up real strong. Uh, Kozar's type of guy, seems to me, he's, he's not all that mobile. He needs to set up strong, and he was kind of leaning when he threw that ball, went right into the ground. You see Smith only needs three more catches to equal that season record of 54. Eddie Brown, the split end, only needs seven to equal that season record of 54. Third down, call it six. 6.29 to go first quarter. We have no score in the Orange Bowl from Miami. Kozar to throw, gives it the pump. Now he wants to throw the screen, complete to Highsmith. Highsmith bombed out of bounds. And that was Donald Brown who came up to cut his legs out from under him. And it's very close to the first down. Great call. They put the tight end weak. They put the tight end to the short side of the field and they screened to Highsmith. It was a super call. Two wide outs at the top of the screen. He'll come towards you now. Highsmith, number 30, looking for a block and then he slips. Kozar with the pump, throws it to Highsmith and there's really no one there. Some good blocks as you see along the sideline. And then Alonzo puts the shoulder down and gets the first down. It's a nice call by Miami against the weakness of the Maryland defense. Donald Brown, the junior transfer out of Oklahoma, coming back off a tendon injury, did not play last week. It is a first down for the Hurricanes. They have the ball at the Maryland 16. It has been a long, very controlled drive. Highsmith again to the 11-yard line. A gain of five. Messner on the tackle along with Chuck Fawcett. 
And we have to apologize to Chuck because we've been pronouncing his name Fawcett all year long. That's just, what we thought it was supposed to be, but now we're told it's Fawcett. I just learned how to say Fawcett. Now I got to go back. As you see, Eddie Brown, he's a speedster and a great receiver for Miami, but he blocks too, and that's something rare when you get the great athlete and he can catch the ball, and he throws blocks like that, and he's stuck with that block. Second down, five yards to go after Highsmith got to the 11. He is the remaining back. Maryland showing blitz, and Highsmith goes straight up the middle. He's got a first down inside the five, near the three-yard line. Tom Parker on the tackle, and that time, Kevin, it looked like Maryland sent seven people, uh, a little unusual on second five. Well, pressure now. Remember, it's a passing team. Pressure and cover the receivers. Those are the two things you can do, and you've got to pick one of them. You can't leave Kozar against the straight defense. And the passing game, too, it, it messes up your mind defensively, puts you back on your heels, makes you think pass, and that makes the run even more effective. It is first and goal for Miami. Highsmith has nine touchdowns on the ground. Kozar apparently changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He's very good at that. Gives to Highsmith. Got to maybe the two-yard line. And no farther. It looks like Kelly on the bottom of the pile from his right end spot, and it was the 225-pound sophomore. He replaced Kevin Donis, the junior who went out and had to have a ligament operation. They tipped that play. They, they tipped that formation. They had a tight end and a wing, and a wing is the, the guy set off the line of scrimmage just to the right of the tight end. And Highsmith was lined up behind the guard on the weak side or the opposite side. He stepped over and got directly behind Kozar, so they were strong right immediately before that play. If I was a linebacker, I'd have gone right to that hole. And Maryland did. Second down and goal now at the two. Same formation. Once again, it looks like Kozar changing the play. And he'll give to Highsmith. They'll try the right side this time. And Maryland stacked it up behind Ian Sinclair. It looked like there was no way they were going to stop him. And all at once, Sinclair, big number 76, disappeared. Yeah, Maryland's got 11 men within a yard of the line of scrimmage here. You see it from the side angle. They're going right. They've got everybody right. Now, the Red Hats can get out to the side. You see, there is some room, but look at all the bodies. There's about 20 bodies in a little bit of a five-yard area. Now, that's goal line defense, and uh, Miami maybe had to get out of that formation. You yes. have to know that Fawcett and Wilson were in there. It is third and goal inside the one. Kozar, quarterback sneak. Looked like he got it, and now the signal is he did. Touchdown. Well, the only thing better than having a six foot five quarterback is having a six foot eight quarterback. And they're throwing oranges. They're ready to come back here on New Year's Day. I'll throw some up here. <laughs> Kozar, six foot five. He weighs a bunch right behind Ian Sinclair, the center. And there's not too much you can do about that. And it was the same formation, but to the wide side of the field. Maryland might have been leaning a little bit that way. Greg Cox. The freshman will come on. He has not missed a point after this year. 30 out of 30. Excellent kicker. Try to make it 7 to nothing. And does. Three minutes, 51 seconds to go in the first quarter. Our score at the Orange Bowl is Miami 7 and Maryland nothing. Very impressive first drive. Ball control. Ball control drive. They kept the ball away from Maryland. Right now, let's pause for this word from your local ACC station. Mark Seelig will kick it away from my, uh, for Miami as you see what the Hurricanes did. A 9-minute and 18-second drive, Kevin. 20 plays. How often do you see that? That's Kozar's number. Oh, that, what does that mean? Maryland better have his number sooner or later. Keita Covington, three yards deep. Thought about bringing it out, decided not to. And Maryland this time will start from the 20. Interestingly enough, you said that if Seelig had kicked off across the field instead of with the same hash mark, he'd have kept it in the end zone. That time he did it. Yeah. I think, was there a spy in here? I think they're listening to you again. <laughs> Remember, Maryland's first offensive possession. They did not throw a pass. They did not go anywhere. Now they're down 7 to nothing with 3.51 to go. And Bobby Ross would like to get some offense out of this unit. Gelba with Blount now dropping back in the eye behind Rick Badonik. And they'll give it to Badonik up the middle, and Badonik will get maybe two yards and no more. Fleming is in on the stop. He is the leading tackler for this ball club, number 58. A little surprised at the offense early. They're being very, very conservative on Well, the you know why they are, Mike? Because if you've watched the ACC telecast in the Maryland game, Maryland's pet pass play is that little short out. 
Miami is playing tight coverage at the line of scrimmage. They've taken that play away from Gelba, and Gelba is probably the first time that he's seen a defense play as tight as Miami is playing. Second down, seven yards to go. They'll split the backs. Crowd really getting into the ball game here, and Stan Gelba back to throw. There's that pattern. He completes it to Greg Hill, and Hill is flattened immediately. Well, of course, as soon as I say, as soon as I say it, here's the coverage. They laid off him this time, and Maryland goes right to their pet pattern. Now, Miami knows the Terps like to throw this thing to Hill. They gave him a little room there, and now you can bet they're going to get back on Greg Hill. They're not going to let Maryland have that pattern if they can help it. That's the biggest gainer so far in this game for Maryland, and only their fifth offensive play. Kenny Calhoun made the stop on Greg Hill. It is third down and two. Miami showing a five-man front. Holder is in motion for Maryland. They'll pitch it that side to Blount. Blount cuts back and dove to the 30-yard line. Nice effort by Alvin Blount to get the first down. Alvin, six foot, 201 pounds, and he didn't dive, Mike. He put his head down and he drove for that first down. That, that was a big first down for Maryland. You don't want to leave the field after two offensive possessions without a first down and give the ball back to Miami. As you said in the pregame, the Terps have to control the football and keep it away from Kozar. You've already seen what he can do with it. Watch the wide side of the field here. They've got two speedsters out here. And Gelba wants to throw on first down. He'll throw it to Blount short on the screen. Blount caught from behind and dropped by the nose guard, the middle guard, Victor Morris, number 90. 237 pounds who showed some pretty good speed coming from behind. Maryland very well concede they had Hill and Rauf out here, the two speedsters to the wide side. They set him down the field and they threw underneath. Now Maryland's game plan obviously so far is to stay conservative. I have to think that Gelba is a little bit nervous in this game. This is a big game for Gelba. All right, you see Stan, he's looking downfield and then he quick throws it out and the two guys have cleared it out. Maryland picks up decent yardage. It's a gain of five, second and five. Gelba to throw again out to Hill. Hill does not get away from the tackler Tolbert Bain who's out there on the coverage. Kenny Calhoun came up to help but Bain didn't need the help as he made the tackle. That well whether they're trying to take that play away from him or not that's the second time Gelba has been able to hit Hill. That ball was very poorly thrown it was a reception but it was thrown inside and a little bit long and had uh, Bain gotten up a little bit he could have picked that thing off. He's got to throw that ball outside of Hill to the sideline. Miami has some tremendous skill people in that secondary. It is a first down for Maryland. The Terps with their second first down of the ballgame at the own 42. Gelba to throw again. Quick out this time, and it's incomplete intended for James Milling, the freshman wide receiver who's seeing some playing time, uh, particularly because Sean Sullivan and John Bonato are injured for Maryland. You see how close Bain was on that one? Yes, he was. That right ball there. was thrown in the same place and would have been intercepted. And he, he tried to throw an out across the field from the outside hash mark, and that's about... 35 yards he tried to throw that ball Bain was on top of him second and ten that's either four or five passes in a row as the Terps have opened it up but they've only gone with the short stuff so far they do have the speed to get deep however and now a little movement on the Maryland offensive line and reaching across to touch Farrell Edmonds was Julio Cortez the defensive end we'll see what the call is if the official did not see the initial movement they're going to get Cortez <laughs> We have offensive movement against the offensive line. We have delayed contact against the defense. We offset them. We're still playing oh. second down. You know what he's saying. He's saying uh, he waited, and then he came across the line of scrimmage. The defensive guy uh, certainly wasn't intentional, but see Cortez, what he did, he touched him for the express purpose of making contact. If Edmonds could have gotten reset, it would have been okay. He wasn't down. That's my interpretation. Anyway, thank you. You're welcome. Second down, <laughs> ten yards to go. Maryland at its own 42. That was Holder in motion. This is Blount cuts back inside a block, picks up a couple. Nice block from Marleveld. How'd you like to be a lineman and you see the guy is pulling? It's 301 pounds. He got a full head of steam. I throw a scale under his feet there as he was running towards me just to check. That was a good play. It was misdirection. Remember that that. Those three down linemen, Jones and Fagan specifically, are very, very strong for Miami. And if you get them going in the wrong direction, you can use their own speed and agility against them. And it was a good call. Maryland would like to do that. A lot of misdirection. If you like to watch not line play, keep an eye on number 95 for Miami, the right defensive tackle, Kevin Fagan. 
They tell us he is often double and triple team. Teams like to run away from him. That time they used misdirection to run back toward him. Gelbaugh with a play action fake. Throwing on the run, complete to Badonik, and he dropped it. Badonik wanted to run before he had it tucked away and simply couldn't hold it. And Badonik, normally a very reliable receiver, could not hang on to that one. He had caught 16 passes coming into the ball game, almost 10 yards a catch. But that means Maryland will have to give it away on the punt. And Wright comes in to punt for the second time. Tough break for the Terps there. It was a shame because they set up that play with the same action. It was the same misdirection action. And Badonik had big yardage that he caught it. Wright's first kick, 49 yards. Got a good roll on a low spiral. Gets this one off a nice high floater and Brown signals for the fair catch and once again Miami will start deep in its own territory this time at the 17 yard line. First drive was 83 yards. If they go all the way this one would be 83 yards. Not of course we're not predicting anything. Four seconds left in the first quarter from the Orange Bowl. Our score Miami 7 Maryland nothing back after this. Maryland in the Orange Bowl. Four seconds left, first quarter. Mike Patrick and Kevin Kiley, nice to have you with us along the ACC network as we see the leading team in the Atlantic Coast Conference right now trailing one of the best independents in the nation. The University of Miami under first-year head coach Jimmy Johnson. What a situation to walk into for him out of Oklahoma State to have Bernie Kosar play for you for the next three years. Yeah, you can live by the palm trees, though. That's a big plus. That's right. Kosar, a little play action. Throws a screen, and it's complete to Melvin Bratton, and the freshman dumped. Wilson is over there, along with Fawcett and also Keita Covington. Maryland did a pretty good job on the coverage after Kozar seemed to set it up pretty well. Screen on first down is a tough play. You've got so much to think about on first down. Run, pass, outside, inside. And uh, when they run a screen like that, you're not ready for it. You don't think about it. It makes it real tough on the defense. Gain of eight. We'll be back after we finish the first quarter. Miami with a first down at their own 25-yard line. Make it second and two from the 25. They started at their own 17, the place they started their first drive, one that went 83 yards for the opening touchdown of the ball game. The Canes are on top, 7-0. High Smith, the lone remaining back. Bratton is on a wing. Shakespeare and Brown, the wide receivers, four-man rush, deep pass over the middle, and it's Bratton. Bratton gets away from Gunderman, and then Covington has to run him down at the 16-yard line. And that's what happens when you start playing tight on Bernie Kozar's receivers. He breaks somebody deep, and what a pretty throw that was. Maryland lined up in double-double coverage on the wide receivers. They got this guy loose up the middle, number five, Bratton, and that was Katie bar the door. But the great thing about this is the pass. Now, you don't see it. The outside of the monitor, it's double coverage. The middle is wide open. See, Bratton, the way he lofted that pass, that was the key because Covington was coming underneath. If he had rifled it, Covington might have been able to get it. Threw it over his head, and then it's a foot race. Keita wins the foot race, but Maryland loses on the play. It's at the 20-yard line or the 16-yard line. And it is a 50-yard gain, and a Maryland player is down, and it is Keita Covington being attended to by the Maryland training staff. He made the tackle and went down hard, appeared to go down under the shoulder of Melvin Bratton. Probably was, probably was we have a timeout on the field with 14 minutes and 50 seconds to go second quarter. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl right after this. Miami on top, 7-0 over Maryland, bidding for more at the Terps 15. And Bernie Kozar, now the all-time leading passer in Miami history in terms of yardage, has almost 5,250 yards in less than two full seasons. You don't think this young man can throw the football? Back to toss it again, floats it. Another beautiful pass to the sideline. Willie Smith made the catch, driven out of bounds by Al Covington. He couldn't have thrown that ball anywhere else but where he didn't have it caught. There is a flag down, however. We'll check. Mike, the man was covered. He was covered. Covington had him. And you're right, it was Kozar that, uh, that laid it in there. Here you see first quarter stats. All Miami. Miami doing a good job. I guess that's uh, uh, Miami on the right. 47. And, uh, you saw it. Let's take a look here. This is a good shot of how the thing goes because you'll see Kozar you should be seeing it from behind the receiver look how he floats it 
and Covington pushed him right there, but he was on him. Had he thrown that ball on a line again, Covington might have had a shot at it. Good call by the receiver, uh, by the official. Check the penalty. It looks like it is will go against Maryland. Here's the call. We got pass interference against the defense. We'll play it first down on the two-yard line. So they'll take the penalty instead of the play. That wasn't much contact for interference. But that's the call, and it's first and goal for the Hurricanes at the Maryland two-yard line. And now the officials having a conference as to possibly uh, moving the ball back. I think they moved it a little deep in Maryland territory. Well, they were inside. They were inside the 20-yard line. Should have been half the distance. Well, there's a change in that rule this year that you can take uh, the 15 yards to a certain point, but I don't think you can go down to the two. No, I don't think you can go to the two-yard line. There's no penalty where you go down the two-yard line. Uh, Kozar's arm, his accuracy really puts pressure on a defense. Uh, a lot of times you'll get an interception because there's a mistake by the quarterback. He's not that accurate. Uh, Kozar's not going to give you that. And uh, that's got to make the Maryland people a little bit nervous back there. They have to be on these guys, and in a couple of plays, they were on them. And they still didn't get the ball. Now here's the uh, reset of the ball. We have pass interference. It was a spot foul against the defense. The ball will be on the seven yard line instead of the two yard line. It was less than 15 yards. I will. That's the rule. Less than 15 yards, you have to go half the distance. Outside the 15, you can take the full 15. Well, Maryland, just nice defensive play by Maryland. They're pushing them back Picked to the up seven. five yards. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Terps need a break. There's no doubt about it now. They're down seven to nothing. They have not moved the ball very well themselves. And Bernie Kozar has had no problem whatsoever in moving the ball against that Maryland defense. And he has thrown some beautiful passes. Yes, he has. We expected that. 17 yards now. The, the entire field is 17 yards. The seven yards of the playing field, 10 yards of the end zone. That works in Maryland's favor. They can be a lot more aggressive. Kozar has to be even more accurate, and maybe his slowness of foot will work against them here. A lot of time, goal line offense, you got to bang, you got to hit it right away. The running backs are Alonzo Highsmith, number 30, and Melvin Bratton, number five, split behind Kozar. Brown, the wide receiver to the left, or to the right, Shakespeare to the right. They throw in the end zone, complete to the tight end, Willie Smith. There is a flag down in the Miami backfield. We'll check the penalty. Usually when it's back there, it's a hole. Well, it might be roughing the passer. And it is. The touchdown will stand. So right now, nothing going right for the University of Maryland. And Willie Smith has just tied the season reception record with 54 catches. Blitz on the outside. Kozar gets rid of it, and then he's going to get hit. See the Maryland player in the corner there? This was terrible coverage. Covington was just running for his life. Smith was wide open, and Kozar found it. Cox will come on to try the point after. 54 catches in one year for the tight end. He's not really a tight end, the guy's 212 pounds. Reminds me of Jerry Smith, yes. the Redskins. Jerry was, a, although Jerry was a pretty good blocker, but. NFL players are about 30 pounds lighter in those days. I don't know Jerry might get a stretched neck if he played now. I think Jerry was about uh, 205. Cox on for the point after, and he has it. And Miami has gone up 14 to nothing on Maryland. And Kevin, we mentioned this earlier, might take the Terps out of their game plan. 14 points is not much in this ball game. Timeout with 14.27 to go in the half. Right now, let's pause for these words from your local ACC station. It's 14-0 Miami right now. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. Bernie Kozar in a little over a quarter of football has passed for eight out of 11, 101 yards. And here is Miami lining up with nine men on the left side of the field. They are going to try the onside kick, and Maryland has it. And this one could have broken for a big play as Miami was kicking off after a 15-yard penalty was assessed. And boy, that's gambling on Jimmy Johnson's part to give Maryland excellent field possession position like this. One more step, that could have been broken for a touchdown. Well, that would have been a freak. That's not a bad call. See, they had the 15 yards 
uh, to start with. He kicks it out of the end zone. He's got a, it's a tough kick for him. He's got to kick it short if he wants not to have a penalty or kick it out of the end zone. It's a penalty anyway, so they took a game. Why? That's not a bad game. Maryland with the ball at their own 44-yard line, trying to get something started. The Terps have had a couple of first downs, but not much more, and have not thrown the ball upfield. Gelba, a little misdirection again, gives to Badonic. Badonic trying to get outside and has no luck. And whenever the Terps wide receivers miss a block on those sweeps, uh, the running backs pay for it. Well, you, you depend on your wide receivers to knock people down, you're going to be in trouble all day. Maryland's going away from their straight-up running game, their inside running game, which for years and years, even uh, before uh, Bobby Ross came to Maryland, has been their strength. They've completely left the inside running game. I don't know that... Uh, uh, they can afford to do that. Misdirection is only misdirection when they're not expecting it. It becomes direction after a while. But Donick, seven yards on four carrots. Second down, nine yards to go. Gelbaugh to throw. Straight four-man rush. Plenty of time and dumps it short over the middle to Hill. Hill rolled out of bounds just across the 50-yard line of Miami territory. Joe Colbrand dropping back from a defensive end spot in on the tackle. It's a nice throw by Stan uh, right in the stomach of Greg Hill in a pretty good pattern. But again, see, Miami's playing such tough, tight defense that they're not allowing the Terps to throw for first down yards. Maryland can't get a first down in one play, and that's not usual for them. They have a tremendous offense. They're used to eating up big chunks of yardage, and this has got to be frustrating. I would have to guess you're going to see Raul for Hill or Holder go deep shortly. Gelba, four out of six, only 22 yards. It's third down, four yards to go from midfield. Raouf is in motion. Gelbaugh fakes the toss, throws sideline. Great try by Hill, couldn't hold it. It would have been a first down, but the pass just beyond his outstretched fingertips. Tried to pull it into his stomach and could not hold it. Miami has played some tough defense. Gelbaugh a victim, really, of the play. It's a rollout. He had to throw on the run. Hill is open. The ball just a little bit overthrown, but it, he could have caught it. A great catch it would have been, but it, it was catchable. Wright will come into punt. He's averaged 41 and a half yards a kick, his first two. Brown standing at his own 15-yard line for Miami. We have 13.26 to go in the half, and it's the Hurricanes on top, 14-0. Wright, a high floating short kick, and Brown makes a tough, fair catch inside his own 15-yard line. So the Hurricanes, once again, with poor field position, but it sure hasn't stopped them in the past two drives. Three plays, 82 yards on the last one. There's no such thing as poor field position. 35-yard kick for right on that play. 13-18 to go first half. We have a timeout with Miami leading Maryland. 14 to nothing. Fans can do anything with Bernie Kozar and company for a change. They'll start from the 14-yard line this time. Eric Wilson threatening a blitz. They'll give it on the draw to Highsmith. Got away from one tackle and then a stack up loose football. And it's Maryland's ball. And that was an excellent call by the official because I had the glasses on it. And that ball was loose before the man went down. Highsmith was mugged on that play. He was, he was hit about three times. He did a nice job getting away from Fawcett. Here comes Fawcett, number 11. Nice hit there. And Highsmith does a great job with some power running. Now the ball's loose. Gets down underneath. Looks like he has it right there, but it squirts out. Now the question is, was he on it and was he down? Or was the ball loose? Evidently, they say Maryland's got it. That was a good call. The Miami sideline really burned about it. But that ball was loose, and Highsmith didn't come down with it. So a big break for the Terps. They have the ball at the Miami 15. First turnover of the ball game. Stan Gelbaugh sends Eric Holder in motion to the top of your screen and gives it to Badonic straight up the middle. Badonic will get about four, almost five near the ten. Now that looks more like the Maryland offense we've been used to seeing. Well, Maryland's got an All-American candidate at center, Kevin Glover. He's a great player. Their strength of their offense is the straight-ahead running game. I think they maybe outsmarted themselves a little in the first quarter going away from it so quickly. Their team, their game plan or game strength is power football, and I think they ought to try some power football. Another interesting thing is they're interchanging Raouf. Raouf is not a control receiver, and that's what they need to do against Miami, throw the control pass. Terps have two tight ends in on this one, and only one wide receiver. That's Greg Hill to the top of your screen. Second down and six. Well, Badonic got about a foot before Victor Morris wrapped him up. 
Morris at 237. One thing about the Miami defensive line, Kevin, physically they are not that big. A lot of guys 230, 240. Maryland seems now weigh them 30, 40 pounds a man in most cases. In college is different from the pros. In college, you don't have to be physically that big. The thing about college is you have to have great upper body strength and you have to be quick. Morris has both of those things. He stepped inside on that play. Nobody was quick enough to pick him up, and he happened to run into the ball pair. But Donick lost four on that play. It's third and nine, and Stan Gelbaugh looks around, doesn't like what he sees, and he has to use one of his timeouts. That's a good call by Gelba. I was wondering, they're booing like crazy because of that fumble recovery. If they throw oranges when they get a touchdown, what do they throw when they're mad? I don't want to see. Frozen oranges. <laughs> In cans. 11 minutes and 45 seconds to go. 14 nothing Miami. Is your computer? 14 nothing Miami on top of 11.45 to go. Big play here. Third and nine for the Terps after the fumble recovery. Holder goes in motion again. Gelba to throw. Dumps it short over the middle, complete to Holder, and Holder is down to the six-yard line. Holder in a drag pattern over the middle, stopped by Kenny Calhoun as he reached the six. He is going to be shy of the first down. Drag pattern, Mike, for people at home, is when you start at one side of the field and you come underneath the coverage the or the width of the field. It's worked well for Maryland. A Hill caught one, and now Holder, who we haven't heard too much from, caught one. He's only 5'11", 193 pounds, but he really put his shoulder in and drove close to a first down on that play. Eric Holder. Big play. Fourth down and a yard. Everybody stacked near the near hash mark. Rodgers in motion. Badonic dives. First down. Got to the four. When there's no room, he just goes over. Badonic's just a little guy. Five foot nine. He's still got way up in the air. I wonder what his vertical leap is. Well, the, uh, however high Miami defenders are is how high it is. Quick, get me a tape measure. We'll measure it right here. But Donick, he had enough room to jump, and that's one of the keys. The offensive line has to get out of the way so you have room to jump. And uh, Rick did on that play, and as always, or as usual, he comes up with some pretty big yardage for the Terrapins. Bruce Fleming, number 58, the linebacker on that side, was trying to do the same thing, tried to meet him in midair and just didn't. First and goal, Maryland. Same formation. They'll send Walker in motion. Now back to the near side. Give it to Badonic again, and he dives to the one. It's the same formation that Miami used that we talked about on the goal line. They go with a tight end, a wing. The only difference was Maryland put their wing in motion, Walker, and then they brought him back. But it all comes down to the same thing. You can make it look like anything you want. What it is, it's power off left tackle, and the defense knows it. Very predictable formation. Badonic did a nice job getting the seam inside and getting down inside the two. Maryland operating uh, either with three tight ends or with two tight ends and two fullbacks. See, Badonic only with nine yards on six carries. But when he gets down here, he gets the football. It's spotted closer to the two than it is the one. Badonic again dives, and this time Fleming in midair caught him in midair. Fleming and Badonic went up together, and they came down together at the line of scrimmage. This is like skeet shooting. It's the same formation. It's the same thing. We just talked about it. Man in motion. It's Rodgers. They're going to go right behind him. And here comes everybody. See everybody diving? That's what the defense does. They try to pick it up. We'll take a look, another look at it here. Rodgers, as soon as Rodgers gets to the tackle, they're going to go. You can time it. And Miami did. Boy, that was Fleming. He did a great job. John McVay, the first linebacker that took the dive. It's third down and goal at the one. Walker will now go in motion. Badonic right side. No, sir. Not even with second effort, and he may have lost the yard. And that Miami defense really digging in on a goal line stand. And these guys are fired up. It is a very young defense. Only two seniors on the field for Miami. Well, you're getting a lesson in defense here and what to look for. That was, again, the same formation. And again, they go to the other, excuse me, and this time they go to the other side. There's no difference. They give it to Badonic again. And again, Miami, see them all coming. They know where the play's going to be. All the orange shirts get in front of Badonic, and there's just no way, no matter how strong you are, you're going to be able to get through that pile. And now Maryland will expend its second time out of the first half on fourth and goal from the two-yard line. I think this is a good timeout, too. They want to talk about this one. They really need to get some points here on the board. And the question is, 
if you've been stopped three times in a row and you've actually lost a half a yard in three tries, do you go for the field goal or do you still do you take another crack at it and go for the touchdown? Well, I, with Miami, I, you don't want three at a time. You want seven at a time. I think they need to change the formation, number one, because obviously Miami has them scouted, and in fact they run the ball themselves out of that same formation, so they probably see it uh, every week. Coming up at the half, we'll show you, of course, one for the books. Uh, Maryland, North Carolina music video. We think you'll enjoy that. And scores and highlights. Chris Clackham down on the uh, turf at the Orange Bowl. We'll be bringing you all that. Chris has got another nice job today down in uh, sunny Miami, standing on the sideline, basking in the sunlight. Weaving, weaving back and forth. Uh, the entire Miami defense came off the field to talk to the coaches. Gelba alone talking to the Maryland coaches. Now, Maryland, they have about two yards to go. This is kind of tough for both offense and defense. If you're defense, you don't know whether they're going to run or pass. If you're offense, you probably have to go with a rollout. And Gelba, the, the problem with the rollout is here that the ball is off center, and the wide side of the field is away from his passing arm. He's going to have to roll to the left, and he's a right-handed passer. I would think they would roll out. Fourth and goal. Watch out for Farrell Edmonds. One wide receiver. Gelba fakes. Can't find anyone. Now throws complete. Oh, he dropped. Von Fazio wide open, and he dropped the football. Holy cow. Stan Gelba laid it up on a string right in his hands, and the 237-pound senior must feel totally dejected right now. He dropped maybe the easiest pass that's ever been thrown to him. Fazio had a shot at the winning pass in the Vanderbilt game. I know his family's not going to like this. He dropped that pass, and this is a very similar situation. He's there. The ball is there. And Ron, who is primarily a blocker and a tight end, as I said, look out for Farrell Edmonds. Farrell Edmonds is also a tight end. They went away from Fazio. They went to Fazio because he's not a typical receiver. He, they expected Miami to leave him uncovered, and they did. So the Hurricanes, with a big break, they take over at their own two-yard line. They've dodged a bullet. Bratton in motion. They'll give it to Highsmith. He'll get just about two. Ted Chapman, the last man to hit him at the four-yard line. Well, it's tough when you draw up the play. You call a timeout, set up your play. It works to perfection, and then you don't catch the football. Well, the greatest coaching in the world, if you don't catch the ball or run the ball, and if you drop the ball, fumble or drop receptions, it's not going to work. Now, Maryland got a number of breaks on that drive. They got the turnover. Uh, they got some, some big plays, a big fourth down dive by Bedonic, and they came up with no points. Highsmith, eight carries, 27 yards so far. He would need about 137 in this ball game and the next combined to reach the 1,000-yard mark. Cuts it outside, cuts back Covington, and Covington both miss him. And Highsmith driven out of bounds, but not before he got to the 17-yard line. Al Covington and Keita Covington both missed him, and then Scott Shankweiler had to come up and drive, it out, drive him out of bounds. His opposite number, number 30. That was some effort. I thought he was stuck. Watch the blocking at the corner initially. They just take Maryland out at the corner. Highsmith gets up field, and now the Terps recover real well, but Highsmith with a bad knee is able to shuck everybody. Keita was the last guy, and if it's not for this play right here, he's down the field. He hurt his knee on that and came limping off. My knees should be that bad. First yeah. and 10, Miami, 7.40 to go, first half. They've got Daryl Oliver, 37, and Melvin Bratton, number five, the running backs. Kozar back to throw under some pressure. Eddie Brown right through his hands. Brown had beaten Joe Kraus. I don't think Kraus ever got a look at the football. And Kozar, with an incredible pass under pressure, laid it up, and it went right through his hands as Bruce Messner leveled Bernie Kozar. That ball was short, Mike, and probably Messner had something to do with that. That ball was not really well thrown. This thing's short, and Brown had to slow down. Kraus, not good defense. Kraus needs to look. He needs to look as soon as Brown looks. He might have intercepted that ball. But when you when you got a world-class receiver like that, you're probably so nervous anyway, you're just glad to be close to him. Brown with 47 catches coming into this game, averaging almost 19 yards a grab. Now it's second and 10 for Miami. They'll give it to Bratton straight up the middle. And Bratton out to the 27-yard line. Joe Krause got a hand on his right ankle and tripped him up. But it looks like it's very close to another first down for the Hurricanes. They do have some diversity on offense. Again, the passing game. It's a slip handoff. 
Looks a little like uh, like passing action. Now body control is the name of the game with this guy, and he looked like his hips weren't even connected to the rest of his body on that play. And it is a first down. Miami out at its own 27-yard line. The story of this ball game so far is Maryland simply not been able to stop them. And no offense at all. They have absolutely no offense. First down and 10. The clock turning here at the Orange Bowl. 7.08 to go. First half. 14 0 Miami. Blitz. Kozar sidearms it to Willie Smith across the 40 to the 42. Kozar threw that football the only place he could throw it under the arm of a blitzing linebacker and hit Willie Smith right in the chest with it. Eric Wilson. He threw it right under Eric Wilson's arm. You see the end of the play. You see. Uh, the receiver in the middle of the field, Willie Smith, all by himself. But the play was made by Kozar. He threw that literally under the arm of Eric Wilson blitzing. Kozar's a little frightening when you see him. You wonder what you could do to stop this guy. That kills you psychologically when you're blitzing. The guy gets away with it. First and 10 Miami at the Canes 41 yard line. High Smith back in at fullback along with Oliver. Kozar floats it. This one was tipped. It looked like Fawcett got a hand on it. He waits one count and then throws that ball. It's a touchdown. He threw that ball a little bit early. Merlin did a good job against uh, Brown at the line of scrimmage. They held him up a little bit. We're looking at about the angle the ball is going to be thrown. You see the linebacker, Fawcett. Fawcett. If he waits one count, Brown would have been free down the middle to hit him and good night. Would have been 21 0. Kosar, 9 out of 14, 116 yards. Smith has caught 5 for 45 and is now the leading all-time single-season receiver in Miami history. And they've had some guys that can run and go get it in this program. Three-man rush for Maryland. Kozar with all the time in the world. Now Mester had him, missed him. Sidearms it back to the other side, complete to Oliver. And a flag goes down. We may have another roughing the passer call as Kozar was decked again. Now, boy, he just throws it from any angle in the world and still manages to get it there. He's not quick. He's not quick, but he, again, his strength is recognition. As soon as the ball is snapped, he feels the rush, he understands the game, and he knows what his options are, and he just doesn't have to be quick. He's got a great arm. Very, very accurate. He felt the rush that time. The one thing that they praise about Kozar down here, we'll get the call on this. It's another roughing the passer penalty. We have a personal foul against number against the defense. They're playing first down. I, I have to question roughing the passer. He was a ball carrier on that play. He was running downfield. Uh, seems to me, we'll see if we can see what happened. Kozar, it's three-man rush by Maryland. Now, on the top of your screen, you're going to see pressure. Good good coverage by Maryland, so he can throw it. Now, he throw, now see, now I can't see that he called that on Chapman because he's throwing the ball. He's running downfield. He shouldn't call it. I got to go along with you on that one. And once you get out of that pocket, you give up a lot of your protection. This is Oliver Fumble. There is a flag down. The ball is loose on the ground. Miami has recovered it. Recovered by Alvin Ward, number 72, the big right guard, is starting his 43rd straight ball game. And now we'll check the flag for you. And it's holding against Miami, a break from Maryland. It could push the Hurricanes back a little bit if they decide to go with a penalty. Miami's been penalized for 660 yards this year. That's uh, 10 games. That's uh, 66 yards again. It's not really much. It's a very well-drilled team. I think our referee left his microphone on. We may hear some interesting commentary until he discovers it. <laughs> From him or the players. We have holding against the offense. Still playing. First down. Still playing first down. It's first and 20 now. The ball back out at the 42-yard line. 6.06 to go first half. First and 20 usually doesn't represent much of a uh, problem for Bernie Kozar in this offense. Brown and Shakespeare, the wide receivers, split right and left respectively. Four-man rush. Kozar wants to throw the screen to Oliver. That's holding. And Oliver got inside the 40 to about the 38, and it looked like uh, Alvin Ward, number 72, was out there holding one of the linebackers from Maryland. But uh, it escaped other notice. That was Pettibone. Did a nice job, too, holding up the screen after the ball was caught. And uh, he wasn't the only thing that was being held up. Somebody had their uh, their claw on his shoulder pad underneath the plastic there. And you're right. It, the official missed that. I could see it from up here. 
Second down, 15 yards to go. A lot of things are easier to see from up here, Howard. Funny, I never saw it when I was down there. <laughs> Five minutes, 10 seconds to go. First half, second and 15. Hurricanes, Kozar straight back. Good protection over the middle and wide open is Smith again. Inside the 20 at the 19 yard line. Joe Krause was the closest Maryland defender to him, but there weren't many people that were close. The touch, the touch, Kozar, incredible the way he just. The thing you have to look for on this play, number one, he has, he has a lot of time, and look how he unconsciously backs away from the rush. And he just lays it into the open spot. And there's just nobody there. Maryland playing a zone, and bang, he just drops it in. They have to get to Kozar. They just got to get to him. They've got to, they've got to get him and drag him down to the ground. Getting close isn't good enough. 14 first downs for Miami here in the first half. They have the ball inside the Maryland 20, already leading 14 another. They have not been stopped by Maryland on any drive. Only their own fumble stopped the drive earlier. Kozar dumps it off. Oliver. Hit by Wilson and Kraus as he reaches near the 10-yard line. And Bernie Kozar is putting on a clinic. He is just picking apart the Maryland secondary. Well, Maryland has, has now started to go to combination coverages and zones, and Kozar just standing back there nailing them. The announcers for this game are selected and approved by Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions. The game is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions in any broadcast, transmission, or duplication of this telecast without the express written consent of Jefferson Pilot Teleproductions is prohibited. Second down and two for Miami, just outside the Maryland 10. Highsmith and Oliver are the backs. Kozar wants to throw. Throws to Willie Smith, is tight end, and he beats Kelly into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami. Maryland ended up with a linebacker, Steve Kelly at 225 pounds, covering Willie Smith, but as you pointed out early in the ballgame, Willie Smith is not really your prototype tight end. He's 212 pounds, and the young man can run. That's a stuff, tough spot for Kelly to be in. Steve Kelly's no defensive back. You don't see it, but Kozar does. Mike, you and I could have thrown this one. Smith just took an outside release. There was no coverage, really. You can't blame Kelly. There just wasn't any coverage at all, and it's another touchdown. 20 to nothing, Miami. Cox is on and sets his own school record, or breaks his own school record, rather. He has kicked 33 consecutive points after touchdown for the Hurricanes. Kozar now with 168 yards, passing Smith with 74 yards in receptions. A timeout at the Orange Bowl back after this. There's Keita Covington. He is deep to receive, and Maryland desperately needs to get something started on offense. High short kick. Covington will take the ball at the 13-yard line. Gets across the 20, hurdles a couple of bodies, and a nice return by Covington out near the 29-yard line. And you know that young man would like to break one this week because he had such a problem last week on kickoff coverage. Kickoff 11, returns. 11 plays, 98. I talked about, we talked about field position. No such thing uh, for Miami. They come from anyway. Four, 436. Took them a while. 11 yards. Kozar to Smith. And a point after. It's 21 to nothing. Miami. And it hasn't been that close, folks. I think their shortest drive has been 83 yards. And they've had three of them. Gelba back to throw against a three-man rush. Throws short of Eric Holder, incomplete. Covered very closely by sophomore Reggie Sutton. This is a very young secondary for Miami, but it is very good. Sutton is a sophomore. Tolbert Bain, the other corner, a freshman. The free safety, Daryl Fullington, is a freshman. The only senior is Greg Jones, the rover back. Jimmy Johnson, the head coach, because he was at Oklahoma State, turned that program around. He didn't have he to turn this thing around. And he had to keep it going, which sometimes can be more difficult. Second down, 10 yards to go for Maryland. Gelbaz had a tough first half. Quick out again, this time complete to Abdur Raul, but he was on one knee when he caught it at the 34-yard line. Here's a kid they need to get downfield a little bit, or at least get him the ball out in the open field. He has 4-3-7 speed. Or at least throw it to him downfield, whether they complete it or not. The reason Gilbaugh's having a bad time, and the reason he's having a bad time is because Miami has great athletes in the secondary, and they are able, more able than most teams Maryland play, to play tight coverage. And Gelba is just not able to find the receivers. He's only had two patterns that have worked, and they haven't worked off. So Chris made a new friend down there. <laughs> He's flirting again. 3.04 to go. Gelba to throw on third down, and it's blocked. 
Just flat knocked down by Jerome Brown, the defensive left tackle, 255-pound sophomore, just got up in front of Stan Gelba and slapped it down. What you don't see is Bill Rogers, number 82, wide open in the middle of the field. But again, Gelba has a little bit of a mindset here. He's looking that way. He's going to go that way. The play isn't there. He's got to check off more against the Miami defense. Gelba now only 6 out of 11 for 35 yards in the first half, and that will not get it done for the Maryland offense. Right averaging just a shade under 40 yards a kick comes on booms this one and Eddie Brown is going to have to chase it and the way the first half has gone naturally it bounces into the Miami end zone and we'll have a touchback crunching punt that time from Wright, who unloaded from deep in his own territory and got it out of there it's a bad break for a punter you hate to see those things go into the end zone it, boom that sucker Two minutes, 50 seconds less first half. Mike Patrick and Kevin Kiley. If you're a Maryland fan, we were going to say we're hoping you're enjoying the ball game, but not unless you're a Miami fan, you can't be. It has been all Hurricanes first half. That's why they call them Hurricanes. Well, the storm, we're sitting in the eye of it right now. That time, a 66-yard punt by Wright. Miami takes over at its own 20. It's about the best field position they've had this ball game. Kozar under pressure, throws sideline, incomplete. Joe Krause tipped it away from the intended receiver as Williams was out there trying to get a hand on it. Warren, a freshman halfback, the uh, third running back used by Jimmy Johnson this afternoon in that Miami offensive set. Strength of, strength of Kozar's arm. He took a half throw and then recocked his arm and threw the ball 35 yards across the field and almost completed it. The guy, he does have a strong arm. Well, he's broken almost every record here at Miami in less than two full seasons. That includes George Myra, whose son is on this team, incidentally, as a linebacker. But Kenny Dunn. And Jim Kelly. And they'll try to give it off to Bratton. Bratton slips a couple of tackles after almost uh, messing up on the exchange. Shankweiler was in on the tackle for Maryland. Right, Mike. Bratton got to the hole quicker than Kozar could get him the ball. He gave it to him on his hip, and he almost didn't get it. Got a timeout now, Miami. They'll use one of their timeouts with 2.31 to go in the first half. It's 21-0 Hurricanes. You wonder why this game is so lopsided at this point. I don't know that it's going to end up lopsided. It's a very tough matchup for Maryland. Maryland's defense, that wide tackle six, and if you've watched all year, we've talked about it all year. The strength of that defense is against the rush. Halftime, we've got one for the books, always great. Uh, about Maryland and uh, University of North Carolina. They're always great, too. That's a music video. Highlights. You're going to like that. Music video. Can I dance? Am I allowed to dance? Sure. Uh, I was talking about the matchup. The white tackle six is basically what it is. It's a pressure defense, but it's very strong against the rush. And Maryland's personnel is recruited to play a white tackle six, not recruited to play four, five, six defensive backs. And Miami, unlike most college teams, most college teams are not great passing teams. Uh, Miami has a pro attack and they have a great quarterback and outstanding receivers and the pressure that they put on this Maryland defense is extreme because they're hitting Maryland in a spot that they're really not capable I think of staying up with these guys they needed some points to keep the game close make it a little tense keep that offense back on their heels they've lost that particular advantage and now they're in a very tentative spot against well a hurricane offense and that's what this is third and three for Miami the Canes at their own 27-yard line. Little pass in the flat, complete to Bratton. Eric Wilson wraps him up, but down before he got to the 36-yard line, and it will be another first down for the Hurricanes. Multiple formations, multiple routes, and Kozar seems to read every one of them. Recognition, he's like a surgeon, and he delivers the ball to these guys in stride, which is real bad for a defense, because they don't even have to slow down. They just go with it. Hurry up offense from the 35. Quickly over the middle, complete again to Smith. Smith flattened with a body block from Kraus. And Kozar just makes you look bad on defense. Recognition, instant recognition again by Kozar. Maryland, the depressing thing for the Terps, they went with coverage and not pressure. And Kozar immediately went to Smith and beat the coverage, even though that was Maryland's strength that time defensively. Clock stops for the first down with 2.09 to go in the half. Miami continues to run its hurry up offense. And Shakespeare, I don't believe, a great receiver has yet to catch a pass in this ballgame. He's the only one that's been shut down by Maryland. And here's the pass again to Smith, this time covered by Fawcett. 
He gets to the Maryland 40. I'd get on Smith. I'd get on Smith quick. Smith is hurting him. Take Smith, you know, if you take him out of the game, and I don't mean physically, but if you hold him up at the line of scrimmage and take him out of the game as a receiver, Miami might be a little more predictable. Smith, nine catches, 99 yards in this game. Back to throw, Kozar again. Side arms into the sideline, almost picked off by Kraus. And he must have heard you because Fawcett and Kraus were double teaming Smith that time. Yeah, you see, that's the thing. You get him to throw the ball across the field and you have a chance to get it. Maryland could play a lot more pressure on the outside. If Smith's not in the pattern, then they've got to go outside or flip it to one of these backs. But he'd kill you up the middle. He, Maryland goes wide with their defense and bang, they hit Smith in the middle and draws the defense back inside. Keep him on the line of scrimmage. He's only 212 pounds. You got to out physical him, as we used to say. First half, 203 yards for Kozar on 17 out of 24. Third and two right here. They'll run the ball trying to get the first down, and Bratton has it. Fawcett drags him down at the 31-yard line, but it's another first down for the Hurricanes. It's got to get depressing if you're a defensive player right now, Mr. Kyler. It's like the chicken pox. Which one do you scratch first? <laughs> <laughs> They're all over you. <laughs> you only got 10 fingers. <laughs> <laughs> or 11 defenders as the That's case right. may be 124 left in the half it has been the Bernie Kozar show and the University of Miami has simply riddled the Maryland defense and the Terps offense has not helped they haven't been able to go anywhere with it. Kozar on first and ten four man rush no pressure at all dumps it over the middle incomplete tried that touch pass again to Warren Williams and the halfback could not catch it. Williams missed the last three games with an injury. Pretty good receivers. Caught 12 passes in limited duty. There's the story on the clock. 118 to go on second and 10 now. It's a bad throw. I've been waiting to say that the whole half. It's a bad. <laughs> waiting the whole half. That's, that's an awful throw by Kozar. Maybe missed him by a foot. Maybe he's going bad here. Uh, second quarter. At Fawcett, uh, at 238 pounds, was hard pressed to keep up on the cover. Second down and 10. Kozar has the back split behind him. Messner got to him this time, and the pass is floated to the sideline. Bruce Messner, who has had a whale of a first half, really, has not recorded a sack, but that's about the fourth time he's gotten to Bernie Kozar. And you don't necessarily need sacks. You need pressure. Even, even on that play, he was dead. Messner had him. The kid as a sophomore is smart enough to throw the ball out of bounds and not get sacked. And we've seen through the year a lot of quarterbacks go down with the ball. Here's a guy just he's not going to let you get him. He's going to get rid of him. Kozar has uh, missed three in a row, which may be a personal record. He set another record. Set another one. Yeah. One thirteen to go. Third down. Ten. Maryland desperately needing to stop Miami right here. They can't let him score again before the end of the half. Kozar floats it for Williams incomplete. Tried to fit it in in the zone again and missed him for the second time. How many times do you see a team that has the nerve to float passes down the middle against the defensive secondary? The reason they can do that is because they got those two great wide receivers in Maryland shading them to the outside. And here's a guy standing back there throwing 35 yard balloons down the middle of the field. And that, that's, you just can't defend against stuff like that. I mean, they've got too many weapons. Greg Cox will try a 47, make it a 48 yard field goal for Miami. He is 11 out of 14 this year. Been an excellent find as a kicker. This one's got the distance, and it's true. So Greg Cox with a minute three to go in the first half adds insult to injury as Miami goes up 24 to nothing over the University of Maryland. Even when you stop them they score. Yeah. Well only three Maryland's a really a cure for this uh, for Maryland would be some points. There's a guy who looked like he wrenched his back on that. <laughs> like the one leg was stuck in the ground but. It went through. It's Miami's day so far, 24 nothing. We talked about 21 points not being much in this game. 24 is a different story. <laughs> I'm starting to think 21's a lot. Maryland, Maryland has to establish something. I think I say that every other week at least. But uh, offensively, you just have got to find a weakness in the defense, start pounding at it so they make adjustments. Miami hasn't had to make any adjustments. Flying over the Orange Bowl is a plane carrying a sign saying, Carol, I love you. Will you marry me, Bob? <laughs> Where's Ted and Alice? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Uh, it happens to you in South Florida. The sunshine gets to you. Well, when somebody, when I see a missile comes from the stands, it says yes. These people communicate in strange ways. Then they say too much sunshine isn't good for you. Yeah, it's apparently not. I wouldn't know. I'm indoors all the time. Too much Miami has not been real good for Maryland so far. The Terps down 24 nothing. 103 to go in the half. And they'll squib kick this one. Picked up by one of the up men at the 25. Back to the 33, 34 yard line. And that was Pat Diatri, one of the uh, reserve linebackers. And that kid is, is a real story. Often injured, an excellent athlete. He just really hasn't had a chance to play. Much. He'd love to get his hands on that ball. 11 plays, 49 yards, a field goal, minute 47. An atypical drive with the exception of the three points today. They had been getting seven. Their only offensive failure outside of a fumble. 58 seconds left. Maryland with plenty of time. One timeout left. They'd like to get on the board. Gelba. It's going to be a screen, but took an awful long time to be set up. And then Julio Cortez just drilled Tommy Neal. Well, now I have to ask you something. If they can call pass, uh, roughing the passer on Chapman after Kozar throws the ball, what is this? One, two, two steps after he drops it and buries him in the back. Now that is a personal foul, folks. Stan Gelba, called. six out of 12, 35 yards. It's also painful. 52 seconds left, second and 10. Miami showing a three-man rush, and they'll drop back eight in the coverage. Gelba over the middle, too high, intercepted. Picked off by Reggie Sutton. Sutton at the 30. Out of bounds inside the Maryland 30 at the 29 yard line and a Maryland player is down at the 40. Hurt on the return and it's Tony Edwards number 72 270 pound left tackle. Here's the replay just too high on the pass. Well he went inside and he tried to go downfield and this is the right play. the guy's open. He's open in the dead zone in the uh, dead, dead spot in the zone. That's just a bad pass by Gelba. And Stan not been throwing a lot of interceptions, but that one could be costly because plenty of time, 43 seconds for Bernie Kozar and company. Only his fourth interception of the year compared with five touchdown passes, but Kozar has the football back, and Edwards very slow getting up, being assisted off the field. The guy's a heck of a football player. He was a linebacker and tight end in high school and a basketball player. He's now a, an offensive tackle, 6'6", 270, and kind of quiet. You don't hear much about him. But uh, the Maryland offensive line is full of excellent football players, and we hope that, that Edwards is all right. That field goal by Cox, a 48-yarder, was the longest of his career. They just set one record after another down here, don't they? That's the type of thing after the game, you know, if you can beat, you look at it and you say, and what? And that was the longest of his career, too? It's been one of those days for Miami, and this interception has not helped. 43 seconds left in the first half. It's already 24 nothing, and the Hurricanes going for more from the Maryland 30. Kozar straight back. Dumps it over the middle. Bratton wide open. He's down to the one yard line. Once again, they just floated it over the middle, and the middle of that zone, Kevin must look like a wide open pasture to Bernie Kozar. He's thrown that pattern maybe six times. It's one thing to come into the game with a plan, but when something isn't working and something is working against you, you've got to adjust. Now, Kozar goes straight back, and it's the trajectory here that really is must be infuriating for the Maryland defense. Those safeties have to come up. They've got to come up. First and goal, Miami Highsmith. Got close, but he didn't make it. Stopped inside the one. 20 seconds left. And Miami will call a timeout. Bratton has had a big first half. 38 yards rushing, 96 yards catching the ball for the young freshman. 205 pounds. A lot of great skill people. Miami uh, apparently with one timeout left with 20 seconds on the clock. I think lost in this is the defensive job that Miami has done and the uh, the defensive uh, game plan was flawless. Take away the short stuff, double cover the wide receivers and uh, take Gelba out of the game and they've done it. Second down and goal for Miami. It's got to be depressing here for Bobby Ross and a, a thrill for Jimmy Johnson. See what Miami does. 
second and goal. Kozar, quarterback keeper. I don't think so. Joe Cross signaling he didn't make it, and indeed he did not. And Miami will use its last timeout with 15 seconds on the clock. And Kozar will come over to talk to Jimmy Johnson. It's like stopping this. So Kozar, six foot five, 210 pounds. It's like trying to stop a strand of spaghetti. <laughs> you have to get it on the end. How do you do that? <laughs> they did it on that play, though. And the, the, the key to that play is to, is to control the line of scrimmage and before he gets going, and then you can stop, push the center back. Not an easy thing to do. Once again, back down to Chris Clackham on the sidelines. Second quarter score, Mike, it is Rutgers 20, West Virginia 10. How about that? Haven't recovered from last week, have they? The Cavaliers hand it to him, and Rutgers is one of those teams that is a pretty good football team. It's, a, it's an Eastern school, and uh, they play a pretty tough schedule. You don't hear a whole lot about them, but but they play some good people. Their record isn't always that good, but they'll give you a fight as West lost, Virginia's finding out. Lost uh, to Penn State by two, as I recall. Always give the Nittany Lions a battle. Eastern football has really made a resurgence, and it's uh, it's wonderful to see the balance in college football this year. You look at uh, Syracuse knocking off Nebraska, some other great upsets this year. Army with a good football team. You can look at the ACC, the entire oh, ACC conference. Georgia Tech, Virginia coming back. Wake Forest with a good club. How about NC State? NC State with some luck would really be up there. This is third and goal. Kozar, play action fake. Oh. Well, Charles Henry wasn't very wide open on his knees at the end of the end zone, and Kozar just sort of floated it in for another Miami touchdown. It is 30 to nothing. Just too many weapons, too many weapons. This dyke has too many holes, and Maryland doesn't have enough fingers. They're trying to stop everything, but Char who's Charles Henry, right? They got Shakespeare, they got Brown, they got who are all these guys? Kozar with play action is, is like death. How do you stop him? You don't. That's the result. Touchdown, Miami. He's Charles Henry is the third string tight end. Cox on for the point after, knocks it through, and with 12 seconds to go in the first half, it is Miami 31. Maryland nothing. Holy cow. Well, they've dominated every aspect of this game, every single aspect. Defensively, they have been as awesome uh, as, uh, as they have offensively. You don't see it. I mean, the zero speaks for itself, but they really have shut Maryland down at, at every turn. You have to wonder emotionally what the difference might have been if, after recovering that fumble, Maryland uh, could have scored on that break when they got down to the one yard line and just couldn't push it in. Oh, there's no question. Being in a close game changes your mental, uh, your mental uh, thought processes when you're on the team, on the field, I mean, and it changes everything offensively and defensively. Four plays, 29 yards. Again, the big play there was that balloon to Bratton down the middle, brought him inside the five, and they went in from there. 31 seconds on the scoring drive. They don't take long here. They get it done. They're very efficient. And uh, Kozar to Henry. And of course, what set it up was the Gelby interception when he overthrew a receiver. Maryland trying to get on the board in the last uh, minute and a half of the first half, in turn, gives Miami another touchdown. And they'll try another squib kick. And Maryland will have the football inside their own 35 yard line with six seconds left in the first half. Jimmy Johnson, very creative on the kickoffs. He does a lot of different things. It's kind of fun. Sean Scott was the uh, ball carrier for Maryland. Those linebackers, uh, you guys love to get your hands on the football. Then I used to run back kicks. Uh, Very sh far. Short kicks. I used to I used to catch it off the shoulder pads of our uh, kick returner when it hit him and he didn't catch it. Six seconds to go. Let's see what Maryland does with the six seconds. Gelbaugh tries to pull out, and Kevin Glover doesn't give him the ball, and a flag goes down. That well, was Glover. Glover didn't have the snap count because all three receivers took off at the same time. When you're hot, you're hot. I don't think it will affect the Timeless. philosophy of this play, though. We have dead ball, illegal procedure, against the offense, first down. Well, no, if they're going to go for the whole thing, they might as well go for 70 as opposed to 65. It doesn't make that much difference. Let's see how far Stan can throw the ball. This is, this is a good indication of the strength of his arm. Four seconds left. Maryland with three wide receivers to the near side, and Gelbaugh will try to crank it up and let it rip. Ooh. He threw it a long way, 
and it was almost caught. Farrell Edmonds and as is it an Abdur Rauf down there in the same area they couldn't get it and a smiling Bernie Kozar goes off the field he's got a lot to smile about that young man Bernie even looks slow going off the field he has so they talk about his courage down here Kevin after one game he played on a badly swollen ankle they said he couldn't even stand up after the ball game, they had to bring crutches out to the center of the field so he could get off, but he played on it. Right now, let's go down to Chris Clackham and Miami Coach Johnson. Yeah, Coach Johnson, with a lead like this, 31-0 at halftime, what do you tell your players not to get discouraged? Well, I, I want them to continue to execute. Uh, you know, Maryland's got a good football team. You know, they've you know, won five out of the last six ball games and had a one-point loss to Penn State. They've got a lot of talent, and I know that they can come back, and we just have to keep executing because a lot, a lot can happen. Coach, something has happened in the first half. There have been three roughing the passer uh, penalties against Maryland. Is that something that you're concerned about? Well, of course, we want to keep it a clean ball game. I, I'd hate to see anybody get hurt in this type of ball game, uh, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm just letting the officials call it the way they see it. Coach, how is Alonzo Highsmith in his knee? He had some trouble with it in pregame and during the game. Right. You know, Alonzo's uh, not at full speed. He's bothered by his knee. It, he twisted it during the week, and he, he re-injured it before the ball game. Coach uh, Johnson, good luck on the second half, and thank you for joining us. Let's go back upstairs, Mike and Kevin. Thank you very much, Chris. You see the score at halftime. Miami 31, Maryland nothing. Well, my prediction for this ball game, Kevin, was 44-43. Uh, Miami is only... All 12, 13 points away. Maryland's <laughs> going to have to get 40 in the second half to make that one come true. And well, they can do it. Uh, I'm not saying they're going to, but they are capable of that offense of racking up points and racking them up in a hurry. They could do it. If this is a tough, this is a tough thing. That's 87 points, by the way. And I know. It doesn't matter who gets them, right? I mean, 87 points. Maryland's in a tough spot. I think. I think Chris hit a very good point. He said to Jimmy Johnson, "What do you tell these guys?" You saw right. Kozar was kind of fooling around with the camera when he left the field. I think that's the general thought, probably in the Miami locker room here, is, "Hey, we thought this was going to be a tough game, but everything we're doing is working. Maryland's got to stop." something that they're doing. Maryland's got to shut them off somewhere and get something going offensively. Maybe the most impressive thing that uh, that Miami did in the first half, their first two drives, 82 and 98 yards, and they just took it down the field, short passes, short runs, then Kozar opened it up, went to the long passes. Everything they did worked. Take away two plays. Take the tight end away and the floater to Bratton down the middle, and Maryland would have been in this game. They need to shut those plays down. Right now, let's go back down on the field to Chris Clackham and ACC 84. Thanks a lot, Mike, Kevin, and our score at halftime here at the Orange Bowl. Matt, Miami is on top, 31 to nothing over the Maryland Terrapins. Now coming up on ACC 84 at halftime, we've got highlights of last week's Maryland-North Carolina game. Better days for the Terps put to a little two-step. Also in our one for the books feature, we're going to go back two years to that Maryland-Miami game where there was a big upset. The hit, can Maryland do it again today? So stay with us. ACC 84 will continue right after this. Concrete project. Tell you exactly what the scoreboard tells you in this ball game. Uh, all Miami, virtually all Miami. There's the score, 31 to nothing. And in total yards, Maryland with 57 total yards in offense. You don't need to see much more than that to find out who's winning this ball game. Well, 328 to 57. The, the most important stat we just saw, 31 to nothing. Uh, the 13 minutes possession is misleading. Miami has scored so quickly. Uh, that they were giving the ball back to Maryland. Maryland really has not had any success offensively, as you see. Three first downs. Miami has gotten first downs at least at will. I don't know. There's not a better expression than that. They had no trouble getting first downs or doing anything else. The defensive statistics are not there. I think probably Maryland's offensive output is as good a defensive statistic as you're going to see. Uh, it's total domination. Miami has shut down. Maryland's favorite plays. Maryland has become predictable apparently over the last couple of weeks and uh, Miami was able to stop their short passes and their inside running game and that's been it. If you look at it in a different way, Maryland had 27 offensive plays in the first half. 13 runs and 14 passes. 27 plays, 57 yards. That's like 2.2 yards a play. Now that's total domination on defense for Miami. They've really done a job. 
as you see there. Miami 31, Maryland nothing. What can Maryland do, Kevin, to uh, to come back in this game? If I don't ask the right questions, <laughs> just go ahead and ask them yourself. <laughs> You don't think about the you don't think about the score. You have to take the first half, forget about it. Start out with a clean slate in the second half. If you happen through effort or ingenuity to get close enough to win the game, well that's fine. But what you need to do is reestablish something offensively. Nothing Maryland has worked. I would like to see them go back to their power running game inside, start blowing people off the line and try to establish a passing game. Stan Gelbaugh did not really do a great job at quarterback. He needed to check off some of his receivers. He wasn't able to do it. Miami covered his favorite receivers. He did not go to secondary receivers. Uh, if Stan doesn't play well early in the third quarter, I think we might see uh, Frank Reich in this game. Miami, they don't have to do anything but keep doing what they were doing and let Maryland make the adjustments. Here's Bobby Ross. It had to be a very frustrating first half for him, and it would have been interesting to, her, uh, to hear what he told his players at halftime. Right now, let's pause five seconds for station identification. <laughs> 31 nothing, Miami over Maryland as we're set to start the third quarter. Jess Atkinson will kick it away for the Terrapins. And back to receive for Miami, and it might be a familiar name to you, J.C. Penny. I wonder if he still got the tags on. Mike and I have been practicing that one. I don't Penny, know if it came out too well. Penny averaging 18.4 yards a return. There's a good look at Atkinson. The first time uh, he's had a chance to do anything today. Another thing here I think we need to say is Maryland's a physical football team. Miami has eluded them on pass pattern. They haven't had a chance even to be physical in this game. And uh, Maryland needs to be physical. And they can do it offensively. They can... They can establish, make it a physical game offensively if they go to that inside running game. They need to start pounding away at this team. Penny on the far side, Daryl Oliver standing at the goal line on the near side, and Atkinson waiting to kick off. Maryland, as uh, we have told you, been able to do absolutely nothing, and here's an onside kick try. Loose football. I sort of had a feeling the Terps might go for that because Bobby Ross knows he's got to pull out all the stops. But the way it's gone, Miami recovers. Melvin Bratton comes up with the football. Good kick by Atkinson. Great onside kick. It seemed like, looked like the Maryland player at the far side could have caught it on a fly, and that's legitimate. Once the thing goes 10 yards, you can catch it. Sure. I, I couldn't tell from we're pretty high up, folks. I couldn't tell why he didn't catch it. Good try by Maryland. Good try. They haven't given up. Oh, they won't. Not under Bobby Ross. Ball's at the 41-yard line. Miami will start from there. The only hurricane drive that has been stopped was because of their own fumble. And they have not punted. Kozar gives it up the middle of Highsmith. Highsmith will get a couple. Bruce Mester is on the bottom of that pile. Mester has had a fine football game. Chuck Fawcett get up, gets up off the top. Highsmith gets uh, maybe two. Highsmith was a defensive end. He was so fast and so big that they said, well, he, this guy shouldn't be chasing the ball. Let's give him the ball. It turned out to be a pretty good move. It was Schnellenberger that did it. The lady and her teddy bear. Teddy bear maybe not feeling well. She seems to be crying. Second down and eight. Kozar back to throw. Four man rush. Plenty of time. Sidearms it again. Fawcett may have had a hand on it. And Eric Wilson on the coverage against Daryl Oliver. Coverage was there, both Fawcett and Wilson. The strength of the inside of Maryland's defense had the coverage on that play. One of the few plays that Maryland has been on top of the Miami receivers. Right. Kozar in the first half was 19 of 29, 240 yards. That's a half. Third down and eight. Maryland now showing a five-man front, and Wilson edging up there like he wants to come on a blitz. And he does, straight up the middle, and Kozar still got it out to Highsmith. What a play by Bernie Kozar. He knew Eric Wilson was going to pound him, and he floated it out there and got the completion, and Highsmith is hurt. It's that knee again. It's almost very close to a first down. Believe it or not, they 
they probably did not get the first down. The ball is at midfield. Highsmith had trouble. We told you at the head of the broadcast with a twisted knee. Now, that's what we talked about, Kozar, the recognition, instant recognition, knowing where your receivers are. He didn't even look. He just flipped the darn thing out there, and it was a perfect pass to Highsmith. Absolutely incredible. And it is going to be good enough for a first down for Miami across midfield near the Maryland 48-yard line. But right now, the concern is for sophomore fullback Alonzo Highsmith. Now, they talked about him, Kevin, as uh, his high school coach still says if they played him in linebacker, he'd be the best linebacker in the country. One of those not guys a bad be, fullback either. One of those guys be good at anything. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl after this. First and 10, Miami, Maryland 48-yard line. Kozar intercepted by Shankweiler. Shankweiler back to midfield and cut down by Bratton as he got to the Maryland 49-yard line. Maybe only the second bad pass of the day by Bernie Kozar, and Shankweiler was right back where he was supposed to be. Concentration can be a problem when you're leading 31 to nothing at the half. You go in, you're in a groove, you lose that edge, and it's really difficult to get pumped up coming out in the second half with a lead like that, and that just really the only reason probably Kozar. Kozar did not make too many bad throws in the first half. That was not a good throw. Maryland with a break early in the third quarter, but remember the Terps are down 31 to nothing. They need more than just one break, and they need to get their offense going. Frank Reich is in at quarterback. He'll pitch it to Blount. Blount to the Miami 42-yard line. And you speculated, Kevin, that uh, Frank Reich would probably come in in the second half, and Bobby Ross has had this dilemma of two excellent quarterbacks. Frank Reich was hurt. Gelbach came in for him. But Stan did not do the job in the first half, and he's got to get something started. The thing that Gelbach didn't do was adjust. Uh, maybe he feels that Frank can adjust here in the second half. We've got an official's timeout. Another point there is they went with their bread and butter play, that power pitch to the weak side of the field. They ran it right at Miami, and they had success with it. And they'll measure for the first down. That's the reason for the hesitation here is Blount got about 10 which would be almost half the yardage that Maryland picked up on the ground in the first half altogether. And it's shy of a first down. My, uh, Maryland needs legitimately, they need 17 points in the third quarter. If they could get 17, uh, they're in the game. That's without Miami getting. That's, that's for sure. They've got to shut down Kozar and company. There's Highsmith. They've got him at the bench now working on that left knee. He's been injured twice, once before the game and uh, just moments ago. I'm surprised with a 31 to nothing That's lead, and this, this kid hurt during the week, again in the pregame, that he would play him in the second What's half. What's he still doing in there? Yeah. They've got BC coming up. Boston College is their last game, and that's not going to be any rollover. Second down and inches for Maryland. Frank Reich, the graduate student, and a quarterback to Badonik. Badonik with a first down inside the 40 to the 39. Still driving hard. Stopped by Winston Moss, the defensive right end. A 6'3", 224-pound sophomore. First down for the Terps inside the 39. And if they can indeed score, Kevin, it's going to be a big emotional lift, and that's what they need right now more than anything. Well, coming out in the third quarter, uh, if the coach does his job, you should be pumped up no matter what the score is. And I know Bobby Ross must have said, let's do what we do best. Okay, these aren't supermen. Let's, let's go right at them. Both wide receivers go to the top of the screen. Reich on first down. Under some pressure. Guns it over the middle to Hill. Hill with a nice move at the 20. Might go all the way. 10-5. Touchdown, Maryland. And just like that, Frank Wright comes in, hits Hill, made a great move, and Hill is now the all-time leading yardage receiver in the history of the University of Maryland. He already held the touchdown record. That was a nice move on Hill's part. The game is so simple, Mike. You run a couple of times, you get some yardage, a little bit of play action. Hill, number four, top of your screen. He comes underneath on the pattern. Reich delivers the ball in stride and a terrific fake, a little hip fake by Hill, and now it's a foot race. And Greg's going to win it. Hill has caught four passes for 56 yards and a touchdown today. Jess Atkinson on to try the point after out of Reich's hold. And Atkinson puts it through. Maryland on the board with 12.35 to go third quarter. But it's still Miami on top, 31-7. to But the Terps sure looked a lot better on that drive. How about Frank Reich? Frank Reich, his first pass of beauty. Right now, let's pause for this word from our local ACC station. All right, let it go! Let's go! 
A couple of red flags uh, in attendance here. Those are orange, however, and uh, signifying Miami. You come to the Orange Bowl, you do see orange. And let's credit Frank Reich along with Hill on that uh, on that drive. Frank looked good. Frank threw it right on the money, and the key here is he threw it in stride, and Hill was able to take it and throw a fake and get into the end zone. That looked like one of Miami's drives in the, in the first half. Just three plays. They go down the field. They're still down by a bunch, but not by as much as they were a few minutes ago. Down by 24, and the Terps uh, have been able to score a lot of points, especially in the last few ball games. Came into this game uh, averaging 20 points a ball game. But they've been up around 35. This is J.C. Penny from two yards deep in the end zone. Trying to get to the outside, and he won't make it. Dragged down at the 13-yard line by Lewis Askew, sophomore defensive back. Maryland did a nice job covering that kick to hold him inside the 20-yard line. That was a great kickoff by Atkinson, too. It was a good hang time. Thing was way up in the air, and it took a long time to come down. That'll help your coverage team every time. Kozar, who was intercepted on Miami's first possession of the third quarter, was back in to run the offense. We'll check the backfield for you. And it's Darrell Oliver, number 37, and Melvin Bratton, number five, as the running backs. They're in the eye behind Kozar, starting from the 13-yard line. Oliver gets two. And Bruce Messner again with a tackle. Been quite a ball game for him. Maryland getting physical now. That's their game. And they, they still have to respect those outside receivers. They're covering them short uh, with a defensive back or a linebacker and then trying to back them up with help on the outside. That leaves the middle open. What they did on that play just before the snap, they moved their safety back from the sideline towards the middle of the field. Conscious of those those little balloon passes that he's been throwing. Mike Moore, the uh, starting left guard, came off for Miami. Looked like he may have had a shoulder injury. Second down and eight yards to go. And Kozar to throw. Over the middle, complete. And once again, it's Willie Smith and Keita Covington quickly up on the coverage. Much better coverage. And what they did on the outside, well, we won't see that, but we'll, we'll take a look at the receiver here. Okay, now Maryland, Maryland's staying on top. A lot. See Covington a lot closer and keeps him from going for the first down. It's third and short. But what we didn't see was Wilson. Darrell Oliver tried to come out of the backfield, and Wilson nailed him. And that's what they should have been doing the entire first half because Bratton was getting loose down the middle. You keep the guy from getting into the pattern, no matter how good of an arm you got, he's not going to be able to hit him. Not bad numbers for Kozar. Just a little over a half. Those are career stats for some people. That's right. Smith now seven catches on the day, 103 yards. And two touchdowns. Being kept up to date on everything today by Ron Siegel, our statistician, and Sam Silver, our spotter. Nice to be able to work with them here in the Orange Bowl. Big play for Maryland. Now, this would really give an emotional lift if they could force a punt. Third and one. Full house backfield, three tight ends in the ballgame. Maryland with a seven-man front. Kozar will give it off to Bratton, and Bratton is knocked down by Kozar, and Ian Sinclair, the center, was pulling out and trying to lead the play. Maryland, so Maryland went down. One of the linebackers goes down in a three-point stance just before the snap, and it shook everything up. Kozar never got the ball, never was able to turn around. His legs buckled, and, uh, and Bratton couldn't do it right. And Eric Wilson was in a three-point stance. That's a big play for Merrill. If they cash in, look out. Rick Tootin will come in to punt for the first time in the ball game. And back to receive Keita Covington standing at his own 40. Maryland showing a nine-man front. Let's see if they come after Tootin. They do not. Pretty good kick. Drives Covington back to the 35-yard line. Fleming on coverage. The big linebacker got down there and wrapped up Covington and threw him down at the 40-yard line. Great kick coverage by a big man, and you don't see guys who weigh that much outrunning little defensive backs that often on punt coverage. Timeout with 10.15 to go third quarter. We'll be back in Miami right after this. Here they finally had something to cheer about as the Terps scored, and now they have the football back at their own 40-yard line. If you're going to go to a game, this is the one to go to. You leave in September. 
That's right. Maryland with the football. They finally got the offense cranked up on the last series as Frank Reich hit Hill for a touchdown pass. Reich, of course, uh, injured with a uh, separated shoulder earlier in the year, and now they're trying the wave here at the Orange Bowl. And the press, they've had so much success down here, the only thing they criticize them for are there aren't enough fans and they can't do the wave. First and 10, Maryland, right at quarterback. Out of the eye, play action. Throws on a run, complete to Hill, out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Nice pattern and a nice throw by Frank Reich. It's tough to run to your left and throw that way. Well, he he rolled, and that had something. Tur turned Bain all the way around. Hill was open, so was the inside receiver, and now Reich has thrown downfield twice. Both of them have been right on the money to Hill. And Maryland's got Miami just a tad back on their heels now, defensively. First down, Terrapins, the ball at the Miami 45-yard line. Opening moments, third quarter. This is Blount. Got about eight yards. And all at once, the Terps seem to be able to do some things on offense, and that's one thing good coaches use that halftime for. Yeah. They make adjustments. They sit down and talk to their assistants and say, what can we do? Maryland was guilty of not making adjustments in the first half. In the second half, they seem to have gone back to their strength. The one replacement is Gelba, but they are running the ball pretty much straight ahead so far. Blount now, five carries, 26 yards, but Donick only has 16 on 10 carries. That's Holder in motion. Two wide receivers to the wide side of the field. Reich with plenty of time, throwing deep, and it's tipped away by Tolbert Bain. Nice defensive play by Bain as they were throwing for Eric Holder, and Reich went for seven on that. Well, you can't fault him for the call. It was second and short. It's a good time to try and go for it. The ball was underthrown, and Bain had a beat on it all the way. Oh, it's for Hill, excuse me. Yeah, Hill up the field. Now, Bain was sitting on him and waiting. He's got great position, and he was there. That ball, if that ball was thrown a higher and maybe a little further, he had a shot at it. As Hill got behind him, but Bain got a hand on it. And there's no pressure from Miami, though, on that play, and Reich is getting time to throw. Now it's third and two, but Donick and Blount in the eye. Reich turns and says something to Blount. And he'll give it to him. Blount cutting over the right side. First down inside the 35 to the 33-yard line. Right side of that Maryland line doing a nice job. The Terps do have some strength up there. Holink and Marleveld. And Bobby Ross uh, was very high in his praise of just those two individuals last week on the Maryland offensive line. Thought they did a great job. This game got out of hand real early for Maryland. Miami did not punt. Remember, they scored on all of their possessions except for a fumble. And Maryland really hasn't had a chance to establish anything. Nine minutes to go, third quarter. Maryland on the move again, trying to get back in this ball game. They're down by 24. Reverse. Look out for the reverse, and it's Hill. Got some room. Wright tried to throw him a block, and it didn't work. And Hill loses his helmet and yards. Nice defensive play by Kevin Fagan. The junior defensive tackle we talk so much about, and he has been double teamed on every play of this ball game. That time he just stood his ground, played his position. Well, he looks a little like Randy White, doesn't he? Sure does. That's a, kind of an awesome thing to say about anybody. That that reverse, another good call. I think they lost yardage on it, but it's a it's a big play capability. Number 95, Fagan gets blocked, ignores it, loses his helmet, ignores that, and makes the tackle. And he got away from Glover, who was an All-Star candidate. Loss of two, second and 12. Frank Reich back to throw. Three-man rush. Hesitates, throws, and too high. Trying to hit James Milling over the middle. Reich was not in real good position to throw that time. He uh, was almost facing straight forward to the line of scrimmage and had the sidearm it a little. He did not know who he wanted to throw it to. He was, you could tell the way he was dancing around back there. He had some indecision, but he was checking off, and that was what Stan Gelba didn't do in the first half. Stan was thrown to the first receiver. Frank was looking for somebody, couldn't find somebody, and he threw it out there. Could have been to either, could have been short to a deep man or long to a short man. It was difficult to tell. Right now, two out of four, 54 yards in that one touchdown. This is third and 12. This has got to be a two-down situation for Maryland. They've got to go for it. Reich against the blitz, throws complete to Hill. Hill to the one-yard line. Tolbert Bain made the tackle, and Hill and Bain 
exchanged some words, and that was a great play by Frank Wright. It's a pleasure to talk about someone else besides Kozar. This is a Kozar pass. It's a lofted pass over Bain. Bain at his back to Hill, and Hill just beat him down the field. Frank laid it in there. For a guy who hasn't played, pretty good touch on that pass. And Merlin on the one-yard line. Wright came into this ball game as the third-rated receiver, uh, third-rated passer in the ACC. Stan Gelbaugh, the man who started the game, was the second-rated passer. Wright was also ranked this week number 11 in the country. But Donick trying to get in, and he stopped just inches shy of the goal line. Well, that's the fourth consecutive time, folks, that they ran the same play out of the same formation. Even bad linebackers pick up that type of tendency. No gain on the play. Second present and company goal excluded, of course. And they've stopped it every time. Well, you see what you do. You watch the motion man. As soon as that motion man, he's trying to time himself. He can't go past a certain point, but he needs to get there. When he reaches that point, you know the ball's going to be snapped. So you can, you can time it right up. Second down and goal for Maryland. Kevin Walker, number 44, is in at a wing back. He is the man in motion. Reverses direction three times right. Quarterback keeper, touchdown, Maryland. Touchdown, Maryland. And now coming up from the secondary, Daryl Fullington to bump into Frank Reich, and the flags go down, and tempers are getting a little bit out of hand. Flag is down. Okay, same thing. We've got two or three reverses Reich. in motion here by Walker's getting dizzy, <laughs> and Frank Reich, he's going over the top. Ball has to break the plane. Well, tough to tell, but evidently the... The uh, referee was right there. It'd be even more difficult to tell from this angle. But as you see, Reich goes up. You, you don't have to touch the ground. You just have to break the plane. And evidently, Frank did. Now, Maryland, let's see if we can figure out here, Mike. If they get two here, that's 15. And eight would be 23. And eight. So this does ball, have some meaning. Personal foul against the defense after the touchdown. It'll be assessed on the kickoff. We have a touchdown. Okay, three two-point conversions and touchdowns would tie the game. And Maryland, of course, sets up in the uh, tricky formation, and now Frank Reich will bring it out of them back into the standard point after set. I think it's a little too early to go for two. If you miss them, then you got to score another touchdown. Atkinson with a point after. And he puts it through. And Maryland working its way back into this ball game with 6.53 to go in the third quarter. The Terps have gone from 31-0 down, and now it's 31-14. And Old Mo momentum appears to be on their side, finally. I think that play, that quarterback keeper, was a reaction to what you had said. They were getting, uh, they were getting so used to seeing Badonic carry the ball. Behind that motion man, they sent the motion man away from the quarterback and then let Wright keep it. If you only need a few inches, you don't need to fool them that much. The, well, the most amazing thing is that both Miami and Maryland have run the same exact plays in short yardage. 6.53 left. It's 31-14 Miami. Maryland, after the personal foul penalty, which is assessed on the kickoff, will kick off from the Miami 45-yard line. And you've got to think onside kick here. Got to go for it. I, I got to figure you got to go for it. And Atkinson handles the ball real well. They'll try the same play, just pop it up, and the fair catch signal for him, and lost the football. Loose ball, and the flag goes down. It was Brian Blades who signaled for the fair catch, but he dropped the ball. And I think, I hate to anticipate, but I think what that official is going to rule is that he was interfered with because he threw the flag as soon as the ball touched Brian Blades and he was hit, but Blades lost that football. There it is. Not enough time to catch the ball. Is that what you're saying here, Mike? But that can't be. Boom, he's fair game as soon as he drops the ball. Sure is. Let's see what the call, and they're going to walk it off against Maryland, and Miami will have the football, and I want to hear this call. Yeah, fair catch interference against the kicking team on the kickoff. 15-yard penalty. We'll play it first down from here. Well, he's going to have, most of the time we say they had a better view of it than we did, but this time I think we had a better view. I can't see that call at all. Well, I hate to say, I, I've seen a couple of calls by the officials today that I didn't agree with that, that went against Maryland. 
Kozar will bring out his offense to the Miami 38-yard line. The Terps have shut him down a couple of times. Let's see what they can do here. Kozar under pressure throws the screen complete to Bratton. Bratton gets away from a couple of tackles. Got a lot of room out there. He may go. Keita Covington will have to catch him. And he does, but not before he gets to the eight-yard line. Just second effort by Bratton, who was held a couple of times, but got away from tackles and then turned on the afterburn. Got to wrap up the great backs. They didn't do it. This is a great call by Miami. They know Maryland's pumped up. They're coming. Kozar executes perfectly. You really can't tell us the screen till he lets go of it. Now, Bratton does what everybody would like to do. He cuts back across the field, takes a big hit by Eric Wilson, and now Covington slips. Downfield, you missed it, but he slipped. He got behind, and it was Keita, not Al. Al had a shot at him, but slipped early, and then Keita ran him down. 53 yards on the screen pass. First and goal, Miami at the Maryland eight-yard line. Oliver crunched as he got to the six. Really took a hit. Getting physical. Maryland, Maryland can be fooled, but they're not going to be out, out tough, you know, out muscled. Maryland's a very strong and physical football team. If they can get their hands on you, they'll stop you. Miami doing exactly what it needs to do as Maryland was trying to get back in this ball game after being down 31 nothing. Now it's 31 14. And Miami trying to put some points on the board here. A field goal would not help them that much if the Maryland defense can stop them. Second and goal, the ball marked at the six. Bratton, the lone remaining running back behind Bernie Kozar. And Bratton will have it near the two. Fawcett and Wilson, along with Tom Parker, sophomore right guard at 280. Kozar is only 21 out of 34 for 309 yards and three touchdowns in less than three quarters. Miami did a nice job on the Maryland backers there. They're both taken out of the play. Bratton's a nice back. You know, before the Orange Bowl, he was the guy that, that imitated Turner Gill on the, on the scout team. I'm sure he took a nice beating that week. I'm sure. Third down and goal from the two. And Kozar to throw. Floats it, his receiver fell down. He was trying to throw to Bratton. He was being covered by Al Covington. The crowd boos. Very, uh, not much of a complaint from Bratton. Maryland's coverage this half has been excellent. Worlds better than it was in the, well, there was no coverage in the first half, and they, they're really doing a nice job on the uh, Miami receivers, and they're making them work for some of these pass routes, and consequently, you don't fall down by accident. You don't have to be pushed, but when you think you're going to be pushed or hit, sometimes you do fall down. Cox will come on to attempt the field goal. He hit a 48-yarder, his personal best ever in the first half. Look out, look out for a fake here. This is a good spot for a fake. Line drive kick that got through, and Miami has put three more on the board, but in effect, Maryland really dodged a bullet. A touchdown would have really killed them as it is. The field goal only puts Miami up by 20, and Maryland needed three scores anyhow. 5.08 to go third quarter. And the bird is happy. He's not as happy as he was. Yeah, I see a little, little crow's feet, if you will, by his eyes, a little wrinkle there. But you're right what you said about that three points. That, that was not such a big three points. Uh, Miami, the way Maryland's moving the ball, if they get another touchdown, they're back in this when we got a 13-point ball game, and Maryland's not going to play for a tie anyway. Frank Reich has come off the bench here in the second half, thrown three, hit three out of five passes, 88 yards, one touchdown, almost had another to Hill. Got him down to the one-yard line where Maryland scored from there. And I think uh, we're going to see some fireworks before this one's over. The Hill is killing. And uh, we talked about making adjustments. Miami's going to have to get some help on Hill. And when they do that, look out for Raouf and look out for Farrell Edmonds. Kevin, you were mentioning Bratton as a, a good-looking young back. He's rushed for 41 yards, caught passes for 157. Kickoff. And Covington from the 15-yard line, hit at the 20, struggling forward, gets to about the 21. Tough play for Keita Covington, really didn't have much of a chance to run that back. Benny Blades down on coverage for Miami, and these teams are not real happy with each other. That was a nice job by Benny Blades, open field. Trying to separate, find out whose leg is attached to what hip. Get Benny Blades out of there. 
Fullington was also down there. He's the free safety. Tapping key to Covington. Fullington is going to be an All-American, they say, down here in Miami. The free safety, 6'2", 184 pounds. Looks bigger than that. He and will you, be bigger than that before he's done. Five plays, 59 yards. The big one, though, was uh, actually Maryland held for four of those plays. The big one was the screen pass. Got him down inside the 10. One other big play in that drive was a 15-yard penalty. But I still haven't figured out. Frank Wright is set. Reich looked one way, tried to throw the other, never had a chance. Jerome Brown was right in his face. And Frank did the smart thing. He just pulled it down and took his punishment. Nothing they can do about that. I mean, Brown just beat his blocker. I, you know, I noticed last year in the Orange Bowl, and I see a lot of it here today, Miami guesses a lot on the defensive line. They'll take a side. Uh, makes it easier for them to block them because you just keep pushing them that way. But if they guess right and get through that hole, they're just unstoppable. Lost a four on that play, so it's second and 14. Maryland virtually needs the score with every possession. They'll give it to Neal. Neal back across the 20. Picks up the yardage that was lost and maybe one more. Not a bad call. Second and 14. You give what they take. Uh, you take what they give you. Excuse me. And uh, uh, Maryland has, uh, has gone away from the misdirection almost completely now, and they're going with power football. And you like to see that. But a touchdown here would make this a heck of a football game. On running plays, there's a real battle going on between Greg Hill, the Maryland wide receiver, and Tolbert Bain, the cornerback for Miami. They are really going after each other, both looking at the officials wanting a call after the play. Third and nine for Maryland. Big play here from their own 20, and right straight back to throw. Dumps it off to Holder. Holder looking for a block, and he's got the first down. Nice effort from Eric Holder, and credit Badonic for being downfield, helping him out. Greg Jones, the roverback, made the tackle. And credit Frank Reich for finding it. Again, the key against Miami. The, the primary receivers have been covered all day. Frank Reich did a little stutter step. He got outside, and he found Eric Holder, and Eric Holder found the first down marker. And that's been the difference for Maryland in the second half. First down at the 33-yard line. The Terps really fired up. Reich now four out of six for 100 yards. He came off the bench to replace Stan Gelbaugh, who did not have a good first half for the Turks. Three minutes, 15 seconds and counting, first half. They'll give it to Neal and a little trap off the right side. Neal runs into trouble at the 38-yard line and is dumped. Looked like a play that Penn State's run for 20 years. Because Miami is so quick, those crossing plays with the running backs and the misdirection. If you get penetration like that, a lot of times you run into the defense on misdirection. There's Highsmith. Uh, they didn't take his football pants off, and that's an indication he's probably not injured that bad. If he was, they would have taken him, uh, undressed him, taken him to the hospital. But if you go straight ahead against a quick defense, what I'm saying is you have a better shot at it. Second and four for Maryland. That's Holder in motion. They'll give it to Neal. Neal driving forward, has another first down as he reaches his own 44, 45 yard line. First down, Terrapin. Another quick hitter. And a quick hitter, if they pick a side, you get that hole right away and you get through that hole quickly. If they pick a side and you go laterally, see, let's take a look. See how quick that hole opened up there, Miami guessing? And he comes right up the middle and he drives a good job going for the first down. But, but Maryland can't eat up too much time. They've used two minutes already on this drive. They got to go up on top. Crowd getting a little uh, testy. Watching Maryland uh, run this well. Right throws, complete. This one to Abdul Rauf inside the 40 to the 39 yard line. Another first down, Maryland. Well, we told you, and it might have sounded like PR, Maryland has the weapons to do this, especially with a guy like Azizid and Abdul Rauf. He is a burner, and Frank, Frank Reich has come off the bench to throw some bullets. This is a great throw by Reich with a man in his face. He stands in there right through the zone and in the chest to Abdul Rao. I think it would have been ridiculous the way Maryland was playing to assume they could come back like this, but they're not playing that way anymore. That's they're right. playing like they should be playing. First and 10, Terrapins to the 38-yard line. Right to throw again, that quick sideline pass complete to Hill. Hill to the 30 to the 29-yard line. It's a gain of nine. Well, it's amazing. One play affects another play so, so much. Hill's been killing him downfield. Now they're giving him a little bit of respect. You see Bain 18 back out of the picture. And now Hill has some room to run. He gets the short pass, and he can pick up eight, nine yards. And a good throw by Frank Wright. That ball didn't take any time at all getting out there. 
And Hill will check out of the Maryland lineup as Milling, number 22, comes back in on second and one. 141 to go, third quarter. A score here would leave Maryland only two touchdowns behind with a full quarter of football to go. Right dumps it out to Badonix. First down, Badonix still on his feet to the 10 to the five yard line. What a move by Rick Badonic. I love Rick Badonic. He's great, isn't he? <laughs> the guy, the guy's incredible. I mean, talk about fun to watch. He really only had one chance to catch a pass in the first half, and he dropped it. You know he remembered it here. Reich, again with pressure, does a super job, looking like Kozar, gets it out to Badonic. Now watch Rick. Missed tackle there, gets down the sideline. He's not looking to go out of bounds. He's, come here, he's, come here, let me hit you. And then you can't get him down. Ever Daryl Fullington, how do you do? Frank Reich, 7 out of 9, 149 yards. The crowd exhorting the Miami defense, and all at once, Maryland is dominating the football game. Rodgers in motion. They'll give to Badonic. Badonic straight up the middle of the one-yard line. Same formation, but the difference now is Maryland's taking charge. They are getting physical, and they're pounding people here, and they just blew out. As much as we all know they're going to run in that spot, they blew Miami right off the ball. It was the longest game today for Rick Badonic for five yards. Statistics not going to mean much if Maryland gets in here. They haven't meant much to him in his career. He has 28 career touchdowns. I'd guess most of them have been one-yard plunges. Well, this is getting exciting. Man. Yes, it is. It's 34-14. If you joined us late, it was 31-0, all Miami in the first half. Maryland has dominated the third quarter. Fedonic didn't make it. Boy, that Miami defensive line has been tough around the goal line. That must be the fifth play or sixth play of this ball game. They kept them out of there on uh, short yardage situation. You have to control the line of scrimmage, and Maryland really doesn't. See the orange shirts get underneath. As soon as they do that, there's no place to jump from, and you just got to take your hits. No gain, third 25 goal, seconds to go, line. third quarter. A bootleg here off of that same formation. Maryland literally has not changed their formation on the goal line. A little bit of a bootleg or a rollout pass, you get right in. Rodgers in motion. And that's exactly what they want to do. The pass, touchdown. He hit Alvin Blount, and Maryland is on the board again. Here come the Terps. Hold on to your hats. We, we had to wait a half for this, but we talked about balance. We talked that Maryland could run and pass the football, and Miami generally was a passing team. They have done just that. Here they fake the run off the same formation. you got to be thinking for Donick. Look at McVay, the linebacker, 58. He's coming right over his head. A good catch. That, good that was a heck kick. of a catch right because he put some mustard on that baby. Atkinson will try the point after. Maryland with three touchdowns here in the third quarter has made a ball game out of it. Atkinson with the kick. It's good. And it's 34-21. The only question, Kevin, did Maryland spot him too many points before they adjusted their offense? Maryland, I think if you ask Bobby Royce, they'll tell you win or lose, they spotted him too many points. I said in the in the third quarter, early in the third quarter, Maryland needed to get 17 points in the third quarter and, and Miami not score. Well, Maryland got 21, Miami got three for a net of 18, and they're in this game. They sure are. They're two touchdowns away from taking the lead. Of course, Miami is not chopped liver on defense, and you, you know that Jimmy Johnson is going to be making adjustments on his defense. Defensively and offensively, Maryland was completely out of sync in the first half. Offensively, they're going with misdirection. They had their short passes taken away. They're a physical team. They're not a misdirection team. They're a team that says, hey, here we are. We're wearing red shirts and white hats or whatever, vice versa, and we're coming to play. They didn't do that. I think their game plan was not all that good when they started. At halftime, they went in, they said, what are we? This is what we are. Let's go out, win or lose. We're going to be what we are. And what they are has turned out to be pretty good. Maryland to kick off. The ball will bounce in the middle of the end zone. And Miami had a lot of people playing up, anticipating another onside kick. But Miami will have to start from its own 20-yard line. And Maryland has changed its defenses enough so that here in the third quarter, 
they have, except for one screen pass, have virtually shut down Bernie Kosar and that Miami offense. The thing that I've noticed about them defensively, they're, they've got a man on the back trying to release out of the backfield. They're not letting him get up the middle, and Kosar has not gone to the wide receivers. He had great success going downfield up the middle in the first half, but not so much at the corners. Let's see if Miami makes an adjustment here. Maryland showing a four-man front. Kozar will give it off to Oliver, and Oliver dragged down by a plus set after he gained about three. And that will be the final play of the third quarter. And what a third quarter it has been for the University of Maryland. Down 31-0 at the half. They have come back to make this a ball game. And at the end of three periods, the score is 34-21. to We'll be back at the Orange Bowl for the fourth period after this word from our local ACC station. Maryland with 21 points in the third quarter has cut the lead to 13, 34-21. Bernie Kozar set to bring out his Hurricanes. In the second half, Kozar three out of six, 69 yards, one interception. Most and of that in, came on the screen pass. That's right, and in this half, he has thrown two passes to his backs, only one to a wide receiver for seven yards. So Miami's uh, offense has gone into a shell a little bit, as you might expect with a 31-0 lead. You don't want to do anything silly. Right now, they may have to open it up a little bit more. Big target in the first half was number 84, the tight end Willie Smith. Kozar back to throw. Maryland on the blitz, and they want to throw a screen, but the Terps may have it diagnosed, and Oliver is buried. And it was Steve Kelly, the right outside linebacker, who was just standing there waiting for Oliver to get the football. And Miami in this half, Kevin, has thrown one pass downfield. That's it. Well, if you get hit on the head long enough, you're going to pick these things up. You know, Maryland's been killed by the screen. Miami knows it, but Maryland's catching on, folks. These guys are pretty slick. And they're starting to be able to key on these things and read that screen of Miami's. And uh, Miami losing yardage now in their passing game, and they're not used to that. There were seven white shirts over there in the vicinity of that screen pass. Third down, 12 yards to go Miami. This is a big play here. If Maryland can hold and get the ball back in decent field position. Richie Pettibone, number 54, faking the blitz and then drops back. Four-man rush. Kozar hit, and he's down. And give the credit to number 77, Dave Amen, who came in on the rush and pushed him over top of Bruce Mester. And the Maryland sideline is really pumped up. Looks like these guys all went in at halftime and switched uniform. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Maryland looks like Miami, and Miami looks like the Terps in the first half. But the net result is we're going to have a punt, and a punt from the end zone. Rick Tootin comes on, his only kick of the ballgame so far, 45 yards on the season, averaging 41-1. Covington is waiting at midfield. And the Terps should have excellent field position. There is Keita Covington. Tootin will get it off and floats it high and long. And Covington driven all the way back to the 36-yard line. Got some room if he can break a tackle, but he doesn't. Gets out to the 46. One more step, and Keita Covington would have been gone. Tackle made by Bruce Fleming, that linebacker for Miami who has played so tough today. And they're congratulating Tutton, and they should. That was a fantastic kick. 13-13 left in the ball game. Let's pause for these words from your ACC station. Five-yard line, 13 minutes, 13 seconds to go. The Terps have scored at will here in the second half. And they need to score still two more times to take this lead down 34-21. But they have really moved the football behind Frank Reich, the graduate student who came off the bench to fire him up in the third period. But Donick will only get a yard this time, dragged down by Kevin Fagan. The you difference can't is, run it, Fagan. Yeah, the difference is, though, that Miami has got to play run. They have to play run, and now they're thinking. They're saying, well, it's different. And this would be different if it was an even game. Miami had taken a 13-point lead, but they have seen a 31-point lead evaporate the 13 here, and on defense, they've got to be a little nervous. Frank Reich brings them out on second and nine. Plenty of time, dumps it off, and it's to Blount. 
Blount into Miami territory at the 47-yard line. He'll be a couple of yards shy of a first down. Bruce Fleming, the left linebacker, in on the top, the number one hitman on the Hurricane defense. Glover one-on-one -on -one with Fagan did a great job of blocking Kevin Fagan. Two Kevins. Center, number 70. I think that's who it is. No, is it, no it's number 62, the right guard for Maryland. That's Halinka. Nice job on Fagan. Terrific. And a good job running short yardage. Third and two. I was going to say it's a big play for Maryland, but every play right now is a big play for Maryland. But Donick, first down to the Miami 39. Not by much, but it was enough. Credit Maryland with not leaving their game plan. Run a little, pass a little, move the ball. They have great confidence they can get this many points. Badonik, you'll see Badonik gets him blocking at the corner. The pitch was real quick. He slips a tackle, and that's what gets him the first down. Number 40. Not a bad block guy. by uh, Zizid and Abdul Roof out there on the flank either. Get out there and block, Ziz. We need you. Badonik doesn't often get more than two or three yards of carry, but boy, when they need two or three yards, he's a guy that gets it. First down, Maryland at the Miami 44. Wright falls down, but gets it to Badonik, and Badonik gets near the 36-yard line. So much easier to get mad when you're behind, get angry, and when you get angry, you just get better. And uh, that's the way Maryland's playing. They're playing just boom, 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 get downfield. Right now, we'll pause five seconds for station identification. It's 34-21, the clock not yet a factor. 11 minutes to go. Maryland on second and two from the Miami 36. They need to keep it going, and Frank Wright wants to go for all of it, and tipped away. Raul had his man beat, and Reggie Sutton recovered. Wright underthrew it by maybe two yards, or it was touchdown. Well, that's right. He either underthrew it, or he didn't get a he didn't get rid of this thing quick enough. He's got play action. He needed to get rid of it just a little quicker. Raouf was waiting for it. If the ball had gotten there a little sooner, he would have had a touchdown. But the fact that he was loose downfield will shake up that Miami defense. And that's what Maryland did not do in the first half, was throw the football downfield. Reich had completed seven straight passes until that one. Third and two at the Miami 36. And it's Neal. He had the first down and then backed up. And he may have lost the first down. He had help backing up. He didn't get upfield right away. Miami got him turned, got his shoulders turned sideways, and that would be the difference, could be the difference between Maryland having a first down or not. Watch Neal as he comes to the line of scrimmage. He wants to go forward, but he has to turn. He gets himself going sideways, and then the Miami people pile on. He needed to get his head down and get forward. Very, very close to a first down. I think it's going to be about a half a yard shy, which would bring up fourth down for Maryland. The Terps have gone for a first down on fourth down once in this ball game, and they made it. Miami went for one, and they made it. And it is less than a yard shy. Okay, this is short yardage. It's like goal line defense. Now, what Miami wants to do is get low, pile up the line of scrimmage. What Maryland has to do offensively is get underneath those defensive people and move them out. It really doesn't matter what the play is. They've got to get underneath, get some daylight, and get a ball carrier up in there for a half a yard. Critical play trailing by 13 points. Maryland needs the first down. Rodgers in motion. Badonic, first down to the Miami 32, and you call on the guy, and he delivers every time. He had help there. There was room over there, but Donick was not hit. He tripped over his own feet, and he was able to fall forward. Left side of the line, Rodgers, 82, leading Badonic behind Neal, and backing in, great blocking. Look, look, at the, look at the blocking there by 63 for Maryland. Len Lynch did a super job. And Marleveld, 73, who took on Kevin Fagan and moved him out. Badonic now 36 yards. It's taken him 17 carries. First down, Frank Reich wants to throw. Has a man open. That's Farrell Edmonds, the big tight end. And Farrell Edmonds to the 14-yard line. It will be another Maryland Edmund. first down. Tolbert Bain made the tackle for Miami. 
Great what play. a difference between the first and second half. Not only the offensive philosophy, but the execution. Well, the beginning of the third quarter, Maryland, two plays, they ran for a first down. Since then, their entire offense has opened up, and all their play action and their routes are working very well. That was that misdirection play action. Miami bit. Farrell Edmonds came across the field. He was wide open. Frank Reich with his men in the eye. We're under nine and a half minutes to go. Reich to Neal. Nice kick out blocked by Badonik. And Neal with room to run. Touchdown. Holy cow. Here come the Terps. And Miami's going to have to buckle down that chin strap one more notch because Maryland has come out breathing fire in the second half. I think a great picture. Number 58 in orange. McVay was down on his knees as Neal was headed for the goal line. Just, just down on his knees. He was down. Somebody had blocked him. Now, this is acceleration. Neal has a seam, but there not many people can run through a seam like that. That's just a foot race. He beats Bain to the corner, and Maryland is close. Atkinson with the point after. And it's good. 9.20 to go in the ball game. Maryland from down 31 nothing has come back to within six points at 34 to 28. You said they could do it. I may have been the only one. <laughs> Timeout. 9 20 left. Nine minutes, 20 seconds to go. And I can't remember a second half that's been quite this exciting seeing a team come right up off the floor. They were on the floor as you see Neil go in there. See, like the old tortoise and the hare, you know? Miami's the hare, and they got way ahead. <laughs> Here comes the tortoise. Get walked on by tortoises right now. <laughs> That's right. Nine plays, 55 yards of solid football. A little bit of everything, folks. 353, and it's been all Maryland in the second half. Atkinson to kick it away. Maryland down by six with 920 to go. They were down 31 nothing at the half, and they appeared like they were dead. And once again, Miami says, I don't think you're going to kick it deep. And they did, and that's a live football, and the Miami player almost let Maryland recover in the end zone. Well, I said he was creative on kickoff. He may be getting a little too creative, but I don't understand that. At least have a guy back there to catch the dog. Second half, Miami has but two first downs. Maryland has 12. Miami with three points, and Maryland 28. And the crowd trying to fire up this offense that has been literally stuck in the second half. Kozar has thrown one pass downfield to a wide receiver, and that is it. But the Hurricanes better unlimber the offense now because Maryland is out for it. Gain of eight yards from Melvin Bratton on the sweep over the right side. The young man is a freshman. Al Covington made the tackle. Tell you what, Maryland better watch out. There's two things they need to watch out for. Psychologically, they could probably feel like they're winning. Now. That could be dangerous. You've scored all these points, and it gives you this feeling of euphoria like you're winning. They're not winning. They still need another touchdown. They can't relax. The other thing is Stanley Shakespeare is out here on the corner, and they're covering him often with single coverage. They're bringing their safety at the last minute back inside. Look out for this guy. Second down, two yards to go for Miami. The Hurricanes would like to take some time off the clock. Bratton again. He'll have the first down as Steve Kelly makes the tackle. First down Miami at their own 34. Excuse me, Kevin. That's okay, Mike. The thing, the thing that I think that Miami didn't have to do in the first half, and they have to do it now, is in the huddle they're probably saying, don't fumble, hold on to the ball, be careful, we got to get this first down. They, they were kind of walking on Maryland in that first half, and now they've got to be getting a little bit nervous. Player down. Looks like it's Kelly, who the man who made the tackle. Kelly, of course, is uh, filling in for Kevin Donis, the junior who was starting at that right outside linebacker position and went down with a ligament injury, had to have surgery. We've got eight minutes and 33 seconds left to go in a great ball game. Miami 34, Maryland 28. As you see, Maryland, if you just tuned in and you had watched the first half, you'd be amazed. Maryland, of course, losing or trailing 31 to nothing in the first half with 8.33 to go in the game, barely more than a quarter played. They pulled within six, and they've done it with some pretty good football. Kelly is still down for the Terps, now being helped to his feet. Have had no report from the sideline on what the injury might be. Hope the young man's going to be all right. 
Kelly, he's played a fine ball game. Kelly. He has been asked to be the short coverage man on the wide receivers. He's been out there all day, number 53, and he weighs 225 pounds. That's a, that's a pretty tall order for a guy. Kelly will be helped off the field. Walking under his own power now. He might have been kicked in the ribs or uh, a lot of times you, you expend you've expended all your oxygen and you get kicked in the ribs. It'll really really bother you for a while. First down Miami with 818 to go. They have the ball at their own 34 yard line. Kozar calling signals. Highsmith has not been in the ball game. He has an injury. Once again, Bratton gets across the 40 to about the 42 yard line. Oh, what a freshman running back he is. Well, he's, you know, he's a complete back. He's done everything today. Picked up seven yards there. That gives him 10 rushes, 63 yards, 6.3 a carry. And he's caught five passes all in the first half for 157 yards. He got 213 yards in offense today just by himself. That's more than he had the entire season coming into this ballgame. He caught uh, 140 yards in passes. He's already beaten that in one game. Gain of seven on that, so it's second and three for Miami. Kozar will give it off to Williams. Williams wrapped up, but he dives forward to the 45-yard line, very close to the first down. There's another freshman, Warren Williams. It's like a bomb ticking. When, when Miami runs that's the right. ball, you're, just, you're waiting and waiting and waiting. I think that's what's happening to Maryland. If I'm in there playing linebacker and they're running the ball like this, I'm coming up and coming up, and the more they run, the less I want to come up because I'm thinking pass, and that really hurts your efficiency. Miami trying to work the clock. We're approaching seven minutes to go. The Hurricanes with a six-point lead, 34-28, after they had led 31-0. First and 10 now from their own 45. If Maryland's going to stop them from scoring, they need to do it in a hurry. And Fawcett came through and drilled Melvin Bratton. That was, that was, that's one of those. If, if you're writing a book on how to be a linebacker, watch number 11 at the top of your screen, chapter one. Put your face and your chest in there, and we just talked about Brat and how good he is. Nobody's that good. No. Well, that was a baseball play. I guess that's why he quit. They wouldn't let him do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he was a catcher, he might have got a couple <laughs> cracks out. Right. He's 238 pounds. He's an outstanding linebacker and only a sophomore. Second and just about 10, and Kozar back to throw four-man rush. Floats at sideline, just threw that one away. Kozar under pressure. Maryland put the heat on him, and once again, it was Bruce Messner who was coming through there. Messner has had quite a day rushing Kozar. You ever wonder how guys, they look, it seems like they're different people. Like Kozar in the first half, and now Kozar in the second half, he just looks... He looks tentative. He just looks like he's not not getting it done. See how aggressive. A little the, bump and run. Well, huh? the Maryland defense has become aggressive. That's their game. I think they were trying coverages in the first half, and now they say, hey, we're going to go after him, and it's working. Game getting even on the scoreboard also statistically. Miami with 418 total yards. Maryland now with 304 after having only 57 in the first half. Kozar on third and long. Back to throw. Big play here. Floats it. And it's broken up. Great play by Donald Brown. He got, closed a lot of ground. They got Donald Brown back this week. He's been injured for a few weeks. They say he's the best athlete in the secondary. He covers the most ground. And there it was, Donald Brown, number two. There it is. We got another Brown coming downfield. Ed Brown, he's a speed burner. He is open, except there is a safety, and it's a zone, a free safety. And Donald Brown gets both hands on the ball, no interference. Here is Tootin to punt. He has averaged 50.5 yards a kick on his two previous kicks, this time off the side of his foot. And it will still kick inside the 20 to the 15-yard line, but Maryland will have the football back with 547 to go in the game. They are down by six. Couldn't ask for much more than this. Timeout, 5.47 to go in the ballgame. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl in just a moment. 5.47 left, Maryland down by six. And while we were away at commercial, Kevin and I were talking, and I have to agree with you, Mr. Kiley, if Maryland pulls this off, it's an all-timer. To be down 31-0 to the sixth-ranked team in the country on their field, <laughs> and to turn around and come back and get them. This is, you know, 
We expected this, but it was kind of an odd way to get to this point. We expected, That's right. We expected a high-scoring game. We knew we had potent offenses. Here, Miami wins the first half. Maryland so far has won the second half, but the game, the game is still in question. And it's on the line right now. A six-point difference with 5.47 left. Maryland has to start from its own 15. And boy, what a day for Frank Reich. The young man has got to be so proud of himself. He's gone through a lot. He wants to play very badly. So does Stan Gelbaugh, their friends. And right now, it's up to Frank Reich to pull it out of the fire. And he'll throw on first down. Sideline complete to Holder. And a first down at the 31 yard line. He rifled that thing right in there. And, and let's talk about Frank Reich. He's had a great afternoon, no question about it. But Greg Hill has been the key to this entire. Greg Hill has been the key to the offense. Now, this is Holder, and he just drives back the defensive back, turns, and the ball is right there. It's been there the entire second half. Maryland with 258 yards in offense in the second half. Miami with 90, and it was just the reverse in the first half. Two entirely different ball games. First down, Maryland at the 32. Right to throw again off of play action. Throwing deep, and he's got a man out there. Hill! Greg Hill on the tip, and it's a touchdown! Holy cow! Fullington went for the interception, and is tipped off his hand and Greg Hill kept his concentration and hauls it hit for 68 yards. You know what the coaches tell you? They tell you if you work hard and you keep pounding, something good will happen to you. I talked about Greg Hill. He leaves Bain in the dust. I don't know why they're trying to single cover him. Here comes the safety. He's there, but he just can't catch. If he could, he'd be a receiver. And Greg Hill, who's been in the right place at the right time all day, ties it up for Maryland. And Atkinson can put the Terps ahead with 5.29 to go. Greg Hill, eight catches, 182 yards. Boy, oh boy, what a second half. Hill opened up the entire offense. He's responsible for a lot of the catches and the runs that the other guys have made. He's been literally unstoppable, and Miami has done nothing to stop him. They've not double-covered him. They've not chucked him at the line of scrimmage. They let him run loose, and this is the result. Miami is stunned, and Atkinson puts the Terps ahead. 35-34 with 5.29 left to go in the ball game. This is absolutely stunning to be here and watch it happen. When I said at halftime, and I got to be honest about this, when I said at the half, and I had the same philosophy you did, Maryland has the weapons to come back, even though they looked awful and were down 31 nothing. But I had to assume they were going to turn around and play the kind of brilliant football that they're capable of. Right, so a, lot goes, a lot goes to the coaching staff here. The coaching sure staff does. took a minute at the half. Even though they're down 31 to nothing, they got him close enough so that something good could happen to him. And Frank Reich throws it up, and something good happens. Something a tip, great. A tip to Greg Hill. But remember, the game's not over. And I think part of the problem with the Miami offense in the second half, as you look at Greg Hill, and he'd have a bigger smile than that if that was a live picture. Uh, part of the problem is that they haven't had any direction. Offensively, they were up by 31 points. What do we do? Do we sit on it? Do we open it up? Kozar comes into the game now after this kickoff knowing what he has to do. Miami now has <laughs> direction. And they know they've got to get at least a field goal. And Two Kozar, plays, Kozar can yards. do it. Oh, yeah, no question about that. 18 seconds, 68-yard pass with help from his friends. And a big break, really, on the touchdown pass. A little bit underthrown. Fullington had the shot at the interception. Threw his hands. Got to credit Hill for keeping the concentration. And Atkinson now kicks off. J.C. Penny at the four. Fumble. It's still loose, and Maryland has the football at the six-yard line. Do you believe this? Well, we were wondering why there was nobody back there to catch it. Now we know. Absolutely unbelievable. Well, I don't know. There's really nothing you can say about this except he should have caught it. Well, we talked to Jimmy Johnson. We criticized him a little bit. 
that there was nobody back there, but maybe that's why. And that ball took a bad bounce, hit him in the leg, and went right. Maryland, with the great coverage, comes up with it. And now Miami is in danger of falling behind too far. And they'll credit Lewis Askew for Maryland with the fumble recovery at the six-yard line. If you left us in the first half and came back from mowing your lawn or something, guess what? It was 31-0. Now it's 35-34 Maryland, and the Terps have it at the six. This is Blount. He'll get to the four. John McVee on the tackle, the right side, inside linebacker for Miami. We are ticking down to five minutes. There's got to be enough adrenaline down there on that football field on the Maryland side. Gee. As, as many years as I played football, I have no, there's no way to understand what happened out here today. There's no way that you can understand how Miami could be so strong in the first half and weak in the second and Maryland vice versa. It's just, it's just incredible. The give to Badonik off the left side to the one. Touchdown by Maryland. All of those weapons, all of those weapons that Maryland had that they didn't use, all the guns that didn't go off in the first half. It's been rapid fire here for two quarters, and now they lead 41 to 34. And the extra point would give them a 42-34 lead. The best that Miami could do, at least in one possession, would be to tie. And for Miami, you are watching a possible defense of the national championship slip away. For Maryland, you're watching the biggest victory of the year as Atkinson, with a big, big extra point, converts. It was, we can't repeat this enough, it was 31-0 Miami. And now it's 42-34 Maryland. Look at Bobby Ross. There's not many teams that have character that can come out 31 and nothing at the half and do that. And I mean character from the top of the organization right down to the bottom. These guys, he switched quarterbacks. He put in a different game plan, or at least a more conservative, something that, that appealed to Maryland's strengths. Offensively and defensively, they completely stopped an awesome offense in the second half and put up 42 points so far in the last two quarters of this game. This would be amazing enough if they were playing Our Lady of 115th Street. <laughs> but they are playing Miami, the sixth-rated team in the country. Maryland could be six and three. Oliver, one yard deep. 15, 20, and out of bounds around the 21-yard line. Miami with 436 left. And the Hurricanes are going to need eight points to tie. Maryland has scored 42 points in a quarter and a half at the Orange Bowl. After the fumble of the kickoff, two plays, six yards, Badonic, four of the toughest yards you've ever seen, 40 seconds. And Maryland has it by eight now. Remember what I said, though. Kozar knows what he has to do. The Miami offense, they've been sleeping, but they could wake up. Well, for my money, you are looking at the finest quarterback in the country, Bernie Kozar. Even though he is only a sophomore, he is just a brilliant passer. Floats this one for a man that's open, and what a hit by Donald Brown. Brown leveled Eddie Brown, and it's incomplete. And boy, has Donald Brown made two big plays here in the second half. We talked about successful balloons in the first half. You're about to see, at least from Eddie Brown's point of view, a very unsuccessful balloon. Should have maybe thrown this harder because he was open if he had. Donald Brown oh. wouldn't have been able to do that. And it's a good hit there. He used his shoulder and not his head. And that's a good idea, folks. You use that shoulder when you can avoid using your head. You could get injured using your head. Brown, the transfer from Oklahoma, makes the big play. Second down, Kozar over the middle, complete to Eddie Brown this time. Joe Krause brings him down at the 29-yard line. It'll bring up about third and three. The clock is running with 4.17 to go. You have witnessed, if you have been with us this entire ball game, one of the greatest comebacks, I'd have to say, in the history of college football. I mean, you just can't believe something like this. So this doesn't happen. And uh, Maryland, probably the best 6-3 and three team in the country. Talking to them, the only game they felt they should have lost was a Vanderbilt game. Kozar back to throw on third and three. Throws in the flat. Complete. It'll be a first down to his tight end, Willie Smith. Foss set on the tackle. You better believe Miami is not done. No, no, there's plenty of time here. And Bratton, 
was in the same area as Willie Smith on that play, and he should not have been. That could have been a, a real mess for Miami. Two men in the same uh, receiving zone. It is a first down for the Hurricanes at their own 36-yard line. 3.48 and counting in the Orange Bowl. Maryland, 42, Miami, 34. Kozar, nice pass to Smith, knocked out of bounds by Al Covington, the safety. Willie Smith, the tight end. Boy, does Kozar love to throw to him. The young man finds a way to get open. He gets open, and Kozar is so accurate. On the near side, I've talked about Shakespeare, and the entire game had so many great lines, and, <laughs> and, and, and they quotes, haven't thrown no him doubt. the ball. Maryland has successfully taken him out of the game, Mike, but on that play, he ran a post pattern. He was wide open on the backside, and Kozar never turned to see him, but you can bet he'll go back in the huddle and tell him about it. First down, 10 yards to go. Miami and Maryland territory at the 47. 3.39 left to go in what has been an incredible ball game. Kozar with that great arm, and it's complete. What a catch. What a catch by Melvin Bratton, and now they say it's incomplete. Donald Brown again. Oh. Number two, Donald Brown, and this ball again, it was floated out there, and Donald Brown, playing a great center field, was able to get over there and make the play. Kozar maybe should throw the ball a little bit harder. You see him go back, he's had protection all day, he's only been sacked once, he tosses it up down the middle for Bratton out of the backfield. Number two, Donald Brown gets there a little late, can't see what happened, but the official right on top of it says it's incomplete. That is the third huge play that Donald Brown has made here in the second half, all of which would have been 40-yard catches, and he broke them all up. Second and 10, Kozar, straight four-man rush. Sideline this time, and Eddie Brown is open. He dropped it. Eddie Brown open at the 10, and he just flat dropped it. Kozar with a perfect pass. Well, remember we talked about the difference between being ahead by 31 points or 21 points and playing offense. Everybody's relaxed. Everybody's having a good time. You're just running down the field catching the ball. But the game's on the line here, and Eddie Brown has to make this catch, and he knows it, and he does it. And Donald Brown was the man who got over there again and got in some contact right after the moment he touched it. But that was simply a drop. Kozar in the second half, after looking like he could play for the Dolphins tomorrow in the first half, is 7 out of 16 for 95 yards and one interception. And now it's third and 10 for Miami. Three-man rush. Floats it to the sideline and incomplete trying for Willie Smith. Joe Krause once again never saw the football and Smith almost caught it over his shoulder. So now it's Kozar that's got a, a little bit of a mindset. Uh, it was Willie Smith and not Ed Brown over here. As you take a look at, uh, at Eddie Brown, Kind of running down the field. Oh, playing that uh, double zone with Gunderman underneath. This is the last play, or two plays ago. Okay, replay of two plays ago, and he just dropped it. And sure did. I'll tell you, you said Donald Brown got there, but he, he wouldn't have helped if, nope. Ed, if Eddie Brown had caught Not that, that time. Miami has had to go for the yardage on fourth down once before. They made it this time. They're facing fourth and 10 from the Maryland 47. 319 left. Kozar short to Oliver, and with second effort, he got the first down. Daryl Oliver, a lot of guts and a lot of character on that play, just fought for it and got it. With all the big plays in this game, Mike, if Maryland loses her ties, that's the play that they're going to remember. The game was on the line, and Daryl Oliver would not go down. Kozar directing traffic with 3.07 left to go in the game. Kozar to throw. Over the middle, intercepted. Picked off by Richie Pettibone, and Kozar hit him right between the five and the four on his jersey. Never saw him. Never saw him. Pettibone dropped outside, and he looked like he was lost. I was watching him. He looked like he was lost. He started to drift back inside, and he drifted right into the into the, uh, the, into the uh, line of that Kozar pass. I know Kozar didn't see him. Well, you know, one guy who's proud is the defensive coordinator of the Washington Redskins, Richie Pettibone Sr. You know one guy who's watching, too, Richie Pettibone <laughs> Sr. He's still out there watching. Maryland now with 2.55 to go and an eight-point lead and the football. 
This has been one of the most stunning comebacks I think you could ever hope to see in a college football game. The Terps will keep it on the ground, get up to around the 38-yard line. The clock now the big factor, down to 244 and ticking away at the Orange Bowl. So many factors to consider here, Mike. They did it in Miami, number one, against the sixth-ranked team in the nation, number two. When you think back to the Terrapins early in the year and their losses, it was the offense continually making mistakes. They couldn't click, they couldn't pass, they dropped the ball. They come out in the second half having to be flawless, and they're better than that. They have played better than perfect. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. Maryland on second and six from their own 37-yard line. And they'll give it to Blount, trying to get outside. Miami closes in a hurry. Blount gains maybe a yard. And Miami will expend its first timeout with 2.07 to go. So if the Terps don't get a first down here, and they'll have about third and five, then the Hurricanes will have one more shot at it, and you don't want to give the ball back to Bernie Kozar. I don't care if he doesn't have the stats here in the second half. He's a great quarterback. they wondering what's going through the minds. Third down, five to go for the Terps. Reich to throw, and he falls. Frank Reich slips and falls at the 32. May have been the only time Frank Reich has not been perfect in the second half. I was going to say, with that fall, the Maryland offense has now come down to perfect. <laughs> they were better than perfect before that. Frank but Reich could fall a lot of times uh, in the next three weeks, and uh, people will forgive him after this. He could do just about anything in the next three weeks. <laughs> it's been an incredible performance by the Maryland football team with 42 points in the second half. Just not, really nothing to comment on here except that... Uh, Frank fell, and there he goes. Might have been the best thing that could have happened if you pass it, somebody in a uh, in an orange jersey is liable to come up with it. Yeah. When you're going good, even the fall, you can find a you find something good about falling down in your own backfield, I guess. Now the thought comes up with a minute 58 to go. Will Miami try to block the kick? And you see the special teams coaches over there with uh, the Maryland punting unit. They want to make sure everybody knows what their assignment is and that they get this kick away. I, I think that's right, not get it blocked. I think back to the second week into a press conference Bobby Ross had. He was so upset after Maryland went 0-2, and he said he wasn't getting through to his players, but he wouldn't quit. And since then, only a loss to Penn State. And Maryland has become, in my opinion, one of the real strong teams in the nation. And uh, you have to wonder, when you think about what happened at halftime, you got to give Bobby Ross a lot of the credit for these guys coming out and doing what they've done. Eddie Brown waiting for Miami back at the 33. Right on a bad snap. And it's blocked. Picked up by Miami and the Hurricanes. Victor Morris, the middle guard. Holy cow. Kyle Vanderwen no blocked the punt. It's not a touchdown. They can't run it in. It was whiffed. It wasn't blocked. He missed it. It was a fumble, I believe. I'm awful high up, and I haven't had a replay yet, but I'm sure they're going to bring it back. Kyle Vanderwen, let's take a look and see if uh, we can tell what happened. It's a bad snap, and, uh, you know, you don't have meetings, so the guy snaps the ball bad. He's oh. going to catch it when he goes back. And what happened, he missed, uh, he just, just barely ticked it. So it's a punt. That's a punt, and it should be able to be advanced because his foot hit it. It's a punt. But they are going to rule it dead at the 18-yard line, and now they're going to talk to Miami. And I think that's exactly what Jimmy Johnson is arguing. Hey, we can run back a punt. Well, the official doesn't have the replay. At first, it appeared to me the only thing, the only thing that gave it away was that the ball, as his foot passed the ball, it changed direction. It kind of flipped a little bit. Uh, and that's pretty tough to tell without a replay. The official's going to stick to his guns. Maryland gets a break. But they're in hot water. And the Miami bench is really beside themselves because they thought they had a touchdown. Would have gotten them within two points. There's a minute 50 to go. Of course, the touchdown is not the big play. It's the two-point conversion to tie. Kozar with a first down at the Maryland 19. You can hear a pin drop in here right now. Throws to Bratton. Bratton at the 14-yard line, wrapped up by Pettibon. The clock is running with a minute 38 to go. The time really not a factor at this stage because they can score. They have used some timeouts. They have used some timeouts in the game in the second half. Kozar straight back. 
Bratton again in the flat to the 10. A flag is down in the secondary. Pass interference, they tackled the tight end. They tackled uh, Willie Smith. He was literally tackled. And that's what they're going to call away from the play. He was the primary receiver, I think. Boy, if there hasn't been enough excitement for you in this ball game, well, you need another sport. No matter who, if you're a Miami fan, a Maryland fan, you've had it all. It is interference against the Terps. Well, I was watching. They literally tackled. Well, they tackled him to the ground with arms around him. Maryland up 42-34. So Miami can only tie at best. Here's the call. Or the signal, as the case may be. So Miami needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to tie it at 42. Or to call my prediction at 44-43, that's not bad. You know, that's, at the half, uh, you wouldn't think that uh, they would be playing for a tie. The amazing thing is they're playing for a tie. They were leading 31 to nothing. Well, the amazing thing is that Maryland came back for the second half after being down 31 to nothing. And boy, did they ever. The pass for Brown, touchdown. Eddie Brown from Bernie Kozar. Interesting here to look. There's a minute to go. If Miami scores, we still got a minute of football. If you're digging for good things, that's right. If you're digging for good things about this, it's that they scored immediately. If they had run it down, right. Maryland will have a chance in this game to, to pull the game out. If of course, fact, Miami would go for the onside kick. Possibly. Right, but that gives Maryland field position. They've got Atkinson. This is just a, another perfect pass. I mean, run-of-the-mill stuff for Kozar. He just hit him between the eyes with it. And they are out to go for two. It is 42-40. The two-point conversion would tie. You wouldn't want to bet Kozar will throw it, would you? To Bratton. And the tackle by Keita Covington. Keita Covington sitting back there, slicking his chop, saying, go ahead and throw that one. I'm waiting on you this time. Two things there. Mer well, a couple of things. Maryland had a defense, number one. Number two, the thing was so slow in developing. And then a great tackle. Brat never had a chance. He didn't know Covington was there. He couldn't even turn his head because he was receiving the ball. And Bratton is still down. Bobby Ross trying to get his team off the field, trying to stop the celebration because it isn't over yet. There's Eric Wilson as we come in late a little bit. You see Eric Wilson with his hand uh, in the air. Bratton being helped off the field. It was one of those deals where he, he had to turn to catch the ball, and he just never saw the defender. Again, Maryland really tuned into the tendency for Miami. They were there, and they stopped it. Bernie Kozar, 27 out of 50, 357 yards, four touchdowns, and two interceptions, and it hasn't been enough. His team only has 40. Maryland has 42. That's some great stats on Kozar. I really haven't talked about it. Mo career uh, records at Miami, most completion, most touchdown passes, longest play ever. That was 85 yards to Eddie Brown. Most 300-yard games, seven. Most consecutive 300-yard games, it eight. three. <laughs> most 200-yard games, 16 200-yard games. He's a sophomore. Most consecutive 200-yard games, seven. The guy can throw the football, folks. He added the career yardage record to that book today. Oh, I could go on here. I've got, to, I've got him on my socks. Well, we just have time. <laughs> One minute left. Miami undoubtedly with the onside kick. Maryland within 10 yards. They have like 10 players yeah. within 10 yards of the ball. They are anticipating nothing but the onside kick. Not too many linemen up there on the 50-yard line for Maryland. Seelig. No pretense, he's standing three yards away from the football. They shift nine players to the left side and they top it and it's picked off. Joe Krause, Krause has got a chance to go all the way. <laughs> Poor Joe. Holy cow, what a play. Krause down within an inch of the goal line. If we haven't seen everything in this football game, and that almost happened earlier on an onside kick attempt. Krause almost got the touchdown. But, you know, Joe maybe didn't make such a great play here. Ball has to go 10 yards or it's a penalty. He comes up about eight yards and catches the thing and takes off. Now, if he drops that, the Goathorns would not take long to sprout. 
but he didn't drop it. He took it down to the one kind of root for him to get in there, Joe Kraus, but turned out to be a good play, and that's a discretion type of thing when you're on the onside kick receiving team. Just make sure if you go for it, you get it. Maryland out to go for the clincher. But Donegan Neal, Frank Reich, quarterback keeper, gets near the goal line, but he stopped 53 seconds and turning. Like he was near the goal line when he got the ball. He, that was a terrific defensive job by Miami on a quarterback sneak. It has been an absolutely stunning second half. Mike, you almost picked the score, Mike. Oh, I said 43-42. I'm a little <laughs> oh, off. Sorry. How'd you do that? I don't know. Field goal. If Miami had kicked a field goal, you'd have been right on it. Hey, who did you pick? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> oh, I see. I just picked scores. Well, that's not <laughs> fair. Then forget it. That's right. Clock is running. 22 seconds left. Miami has one timeout left. They have not tried to call it. And Reich will not even try for the touchdown. He just kneels. And there is some sportsmanship on the part of Bobby Ross and the Maryland Terrapins. Rather than trying to rub it in, you just go down on one knee and let it go. Miami expends its last time out. There are seven seconds left. Maryland will have to run one more play. I like Bobby Ross. I'm happy for Bobby Can't help Ross. it. Can't help but like him. I, I wish I'd have been in that locker room. I don't know what he did, but he ought to write a book on it. He'd sell a few copies. Well, I would just guess. Uh, Bobby Ross has a rather even temper, but I might guess there's no paint left on the inside of his balls. <laughs> Let's get down to the uh, floor of the Orange Bowl and Chris Clackham. Okay, Mike, one thing that happened back in the third quarter when Maryland had scored their 34th point, they started touting the Maryland players, rather when Miami scored their 34th point, they started touting the Maryland players, laughing at them, saying, hey, it's hot down here, isn't it, guys? Well, needless to say, the Maryland players got fired up, and we know the end result. The score is 42-3. to That's a great insight, Chris, and that's right, and that football's an emotional game, and you better not pick on the other guy. Bad enough you're going to hit him on every play, but don't laugh at him because if he's any good at all, but how would you do know? something strange. How would you know? You're up 31-0. Yeah. You're at home. You're ranked sixth in the country. You're just pulverizing somebody. Well, it's a lesson in life that I think the Miami team has learned. And that is going to be the last play of the ball game. Maryland, with 42 points in the second half, has won a stunning victory here in the Orange Bowl. The final score at the Orange Bowl, Maryland 42, Miami 40.